state of Alaska. Driver Manual. DMV. Prepared by Alaska. Department of. Administration. Division of Motor Vehicles. www.alaska.gov slash DMV. State of Alaska. Driver Manual. The purpose of this manual is to provide the reader with a general familiarity with the principles of safe and lawful operation of a motor vehicle. The contents of this manual are not intended to serve as a precise statement of all the statutes and regulations of the state of Alaska pertaining to the operation of a motor vehicle and should not be understood by the reader as such. Rev. September 2019 To all who now drive and those who will drive, a safe driver must constantly demonstrate a courteous attitude and exercise sound judgment. To qualify for an operator's license you must acquire knowledge, develop skills, and possess the necessary physical and mental qualifications. As a beginning driver the privilege to drive represents a stepping stone in your life. It can be a pleasant experience and lead to economical well-being and enjoyment or it can be a fatal experience and result in pain and grief. Your future, as a driver, might very well be decided by how well you study and absorb the information contained in this manual and how conscientiously you practice the principles contained herein. You are invited to join the drivers who are already sharing Alaska streets and highways. As an experienced driver a review of this guide will enable you to improve your driving and your understanding of the increasingly complex traffic patterns and control measures. An uninformed, unskilled driver is a traffic hazard. Won't you join the thousands of Alaskans who exemplify that crash and violation free driving is the result of the application of safe driving principles and courtesy? Make driving a safe and enjoyable experience for yourself and other drivers who share the road with you. Produced by Division of Motor Vehicles This manual may not be used during the test. Online Services Go to http colon slash slash doa.alaska.gov slash dmv to access all of the Alaska DMV online services. Schedule an appointment at Benson. Schedule an appointment at Palmer. Schedule an appointment at Fairbanks. Schedule my road test. Get on the road test wait list. Get my driving record. Change my address, ID or license. Renew my license or ID card. Get a duplicate license or ID card. Track my ID or license. Take a practice knowledge test. Register to vote. Submit online certificate of insurance. Renew my registration. Change my address, vehicles. Renew my permanent disability permit. Report the sale of my vehicle or boat. Order my personalized plates. Find my registration tax and fees. Submit a crash report. Who must have an Alaska driver's license? Every person who operates a motor vehicle on Alaska streets, highways, or other public property must have a valid Alaska driver's license or permit. The few exceptions are listed below. Who is exempt? 1A non-resident who is at least 16 years of age and has in their possession a valid driver's license issued by another state or country. However, an Alaska driver's license must be obtained by the end of a 90-day period after entry into the state. To a member of the armed forces of the United States, and their spouse who is over the age of 18, who has a valid driver's license issued by another state, and who maintains permanent residence in that state. A member's dependents are not exempt. 3. A person when driving farm equipment that is only temporarily driven or moved on a highway. 4. An employee of the United States government while operating a United States government vehicle on official business. 5. A commercial driver who is domiciled in another state. Licenses and permits. Alaska has seven classes of driver's licenses and two types of permits. Classes A, B, and C are licenses used for operating commercial motor vehicles. A separate manual is published for persons interested in obtaining a commercial driver's license. Class D is the license used for operating passenger vehicles. Motorcycles and motor scooters with engine displacements of less than 50 cubic centimeters can also be operated with a Class D license. 
Class M1 are licenses used to operate motorcycles and motor scooters with engine displacements of 50 cubic centimeters or more. Individuals who are 14 or 15 years of age may obtain a M2 license for motor scooters with an engine displacement of less than 50 cubic centimeters. A Class M3 license allows the operation of three-wheeled motorcycles, trike, three-wheeled motor-driven cycles, and three-wheeled motorized bicycles with an engine displacement of 50 cubic centimeters or more. The Division of Motor Vehicles publishes a separate manual for persons interested in obtaining a motorcycle license. Instruction permits, which allow for drivers to practice driving, are the IP, IM, and IE classes. The Class S endorsement is used for operating a school bus. A school bus driver endorsement is required whenever school children are transported for compensation. The Department of Education publishes a separate school bus driver's manual. If operating a school bus that qualifies as a commercial motor vehicle, a CDL with an S endorsement must be obtained. Identification When you apply for an original driver's license or permit, you must furnish your social security number. While you don't need to present your card, the social security number must match what is in the social security database used by the division. Proof of residence address, such as a bank statement, utility bill, or pay stub. Documentary proof of your date of birth, U.S. citizenship, or proof of authorized stay in the United States and at least one other form of identification to verify your name. The proof of date of birth may consist of one of the following. One certified United States birth certificate. The certificate must have a raised seal and be issued by an authorized government agency such as the Bureau of Vital Statistics or State Board of Health. Hospital-issued certificates and baptismal certificates are not acceptable. Two court order which must contain the individual's full name, date of birth, and court seal. Some examples include an adoption document, a name change document, or gender change document. It does not include an abstract of criminal or civil conviction. Three military identification card for active duty, retiree, or reservist. Service member only. Dependent military IDs are not acceptable as a primary document. Four passport, U.S., expired passports are not valid. Five passport card us. Six report of birth abroad by a citizen of the United States, issued by a U.S. consular officer. Seven passport foreign with the following Immigration and Naturalization Service, INS, documents are acceptable. The document must be an original. Expired documents are unacceptable. A. Resident Alien Card or Permanent Resident Card, I-551. B. Temporary Resident Card, I-688. C. Valid Foreign Passport with Appropriate Immigration Documents. D. Employment Authorization Card or Employment Authorization Document, I-688A, I-688B, or I-766. E. Certificate of Citizenship or Naturalization. Proof of authorized stay in the United States is required to renew an Alaska license, permit or identification card. If the name on the document for proof of date of birth does not match the name on the document for proof of identification, certified copies of legal documents of name change must be provided to link all names previously used. The other form of identification may consist of one of the following. 1. All primary documents. 2. Social security number. If you are presenting your card, it cannot be metal. 3. Canadian or U.S. Bureau of Indian Affairs card or an Indian Treaty card. DMV will determine acceptability. 4. Driver license or ID card that has not been expired over a year. 5. Court order that contain S. The applicant's date of birth. 6. Foreign birth certificate. 7. Health insurance card, i.e. Blue Cross slash Blue Shield, Kaiser, Aetna, or a health maintenance organization, HMO. 8. Marriage license or certificate. 9. Individuals medical records from a doctor or a hospital. 10. Military dependent identification. 11. Military discharge or separation papers. DD214. 12. Gun permit. 13. Pilot's license. 14. Certified school record or transcript. 
15 Photographic Government, Employer, Student Identification Card 16 Vehicle Title Issued 30 Days Prior to Application A Vehicle Registration Is Not Acceptable 17 Welfare Card 18 Prison Release Document 19 TWIC Card, Transportation Worker Identification Card Parental Consent Alaska statutes require parental signature for all minors under the age of 18 who are applying for a driver's license or instruction permit. The law provides that any negligence or willful misconduct of a minor under the age of 18 when driving a motor vehicle may be attributed to the person who signed the parental consent for the minor. By giving their consent and signing the parental consent for the minor, the signer may become liable for damages in a motor vehicle crash. A parent or guardian must complete and sign the parental consent portion on the back of the application for Alaska driver license, permit or identification card, Form 478, prior to issuance of a permit or license for an applicant under the age of 18. A separate consent is required for each specific type of permit or license that is issued. If the parent is not present, a properly completed and notarized parent-slash-guardian consent for a minor, Form 433, is required. The parent or guardian may withdraw consent, however, only the person who signed the parental consent form can withdraw consent. That person may submit to the DMV a notarized written request or witnessed by a DMV employee. The DMV will then cancel the minor's license or permit. Non-Commercial Instruction Permit An instruction permit is required for everyone learning to drive on a street or highway. If you are 14 years of age or older, you may obtain the permit which is valid for two years. While you are learning to drive, you must be accompanied by a licensed driver. The licensed driver must be at least 21 years of age and have at least one year of driving experience for the same type or class of vehicle you are driving. For Passenger Vehicles the licensed driver must occupy the seat beside you. For motorcycles or motor scooters, you must be within visual sight and under the immediate supervision of the licensed driver. A special instruction permit may be issued to those persons enrolled in an approved high school, community college, commercial driver training course, or approved medical program. If you are 16 or 17, you must have a valid instruction permit for six months before the DMV can issue you a provisional Class D license. Each type of non-commercial instruction permit issued is valid for two years and can only be renewed one time. To obtain an original instruction permit, you must satisfy the identification requirements, pass the vision and written tests, and if you are under 18 years of age, have parental consent. The fee for an original instruction permit is $15. If you have previously held a license for that class of license you may obtain another permit after five years of expiration. Driver's License Requirements Driving is a privilege, not a right. Following is information concerning a driver's license. 1A license may be issued to an applicant who is at least 16 years of age. 2. The license must be in the licensee's possession at all times while driving. 3. A license must be signed by the licensee to be valid. 4. Separate tests are required for the operation of a motorcycle, motor scooter, or moped. 5. If you are under 21 years of age your driver's license will expire 90 days after your 21st birthday. An alcohol awareness test must be passed prior to renewing. 6. As a result of physical conditions, some drivers are restricted to driving with corrective lenses, special equipment, or otherwise. 7A license will not be issued to an applicant whose privilege to drive is suspended, cancelled, or revoked in Alaska or in another state. 8. An applicant holding an out-of-state license may be required to surrender that license before an Alaska license will be issued. 9. Dependents of military personnel, other than the spouse, who plan to drive in this state must obtain an Alaskan license. 10. Conviction of driving while license is cancelled, suspended, revoked, or in violation of a limited license will result in a jail sentence of not less than 10 days. 11. Social security numbers are mandatory for all permits and licenses. 12. Applicants who are 16 or 17 years of age must have a valid instruction permit for at least 6 months before they can be issued a license. Provisional Licenses 
provisional licenses will give a new driver the opportunity to gain experience while lessening distractions, which may lead to illegal maneuvers and possible crashes. By closely monitoring the young person's driving record and illegal use of alcohol or drugs, more responsible drivers will gain their full license privileges before 18 years of age. Some drivers will have provisional restrictions until their 18th birthday due to their driving behavior. All parents should consider other restrictions, which may help their young driver have a safer beginning experience as an independent driver. Cell phone and stereo use while driving should be discussed as well as eating and drinking while driving. Any activity, even conversation, can take the focus off the driving, causing distractions, which can lead to violations and crashes. If you are under 18 years of age and obtaining your first driver license you, must have a valid permit for six months prior to obtaining your provisional license, your parent, legal guardian or employer must certify that you have had at least 40 hours of driving experience, including at least 10 hours of driving in progressively challenging circumstances, such as driving in inclement weather and nighttime driving, and you must not have been convicted of a violation of a traffic law within the six months before you apply for your provisional driver license. Once you obtain your provisional license you may not graduate to a driver license for at least six months and cannot have been convicted of violating a traffic law or been convicted of violating as 04.16.050, c, repeat minor consuming alcohol, during the six months before applying for a driver license. During the provisional license stage which is a minimum of six months and can remain in effect up to the age of 18, you may not carry passengers unless one of the passengers is a parent, legal guardian, or a person at least 21 years of age. May carry, without a parent in the vehicle, passengers if they are siblings. May not operate a motor vehicle between the hours of 1 a.m. and 5 a.m. unless accompanied by a parent, legal guardian, or a person at least 21 years of age who is licensed to drive the class of vehicle being used. May operate a motor vehicle between the hours of 1 a.m. and 5 a.m. to or from your place of employment or within the scope of your employment and driving is along the most direct route. After six months of conviction-free driving and no convictions for illegal use of alcohol or drugs, you may have the provisional restriction removed. To remove a provisional restriction a new parental consent must be provided and a new driver license issued for a fee of $15. A driver 18 years of age or older may obtain a license without provisional restrictions without parental consent for a fee of $15. Note, the passenger and hour restrictions do not apply if you have an off-system license restricted to areas not connected to the land highway system or is not connected to a highway where average daily traffic volume is 499 or greater. After 18 years of age, or once you go to DMV and remove the restrictions, the restrictions no longer apply. Examinations The examinations conducted by the Division of Motor Vehicles are designed to aid in the determination of the applicant's mental and physical competence, also, to determine whether or not the applicant has acquired the knowledge and technical skills to safely operate a motor vehicle. Vision A test is required of each driver to determine visual acuity before any license or permit is issued. This includes original, renewal, and duplicate licenses. A telebinocular device is used to check vision. If you normally wear corrective lenses, bring them with you when you apply for any type of license. In lieu of the vision test, you may submit a certified statement from a licensed physician or optometrist stating that your vision meets or exceeds the department's standards. The standards are as follows. 1. To qualify you must have, in each eye or with both eyes together at least 20 fortieths vision. 2. If you need corrective lenses in order to qualify, you must wear them while driving. 3. If you fail to qualify because you are unable to see well, you will be denied a license or permit until you are able to qualify. Written, the written test is required for applicants not currently licensed in Alaska or whose driving privileges have been expired for over one year, or whose driving privileges have been revoked. An alcohol awareness written test must be taken after your 21st birthday prior to an original or renewal driver license. The written test covers only information found in this manual, including traffic laws, safe driving practices, and highway sign recognition. If failed, 
the test may be retaken the following day. If you can understand the English language, but are unable to read or have difficulty reading, you may bring someone who may read the questions to you but you must independently answer the questions. Driving The driving test is required for applicants who have never been licensed, or who have not had a valid license for the past five years, or whose driving privileges have been revoked. Usually, a person who has a valid license from another state is not required to take the driving test. Driving tests are available at most Division of Motor Vehicle offices or through state-approved third-party testers. You may be required to make an appointment, and you must pay a non-refundable driving test fee prior to taking the driving test. The fee for a driving test through the Division of Motor Vehicles is $15. Fees through third-party testers vary. You must furnish a currently registered vehicle with proof of insurance for the test. The vehicle will be checked for required equipment. The equipment must be in good working condition and proper adjustment. A driving test may be refused or delayed until mechanical defects are corrected. Please review the equipment section of this manual. No one is allowed to accompany you and the examiner during the driving test. The driving test consists of normal driving tasks. You will not be asked to do anything against the law. You will be graded on your ability to perform several tasks such as 1. Starting and stopping 2. Parking parallel slash 3. Point turn 3. Quick stop 4. Backing 5. Use of turn signals 6. Left and right turns 7. Proper lane change 8. Speed control 9. Following a vehicle 10 Traffic Signs and Signals 11 Intersection Observance 12 General Control of the Vehicle The examiner will answer questions on proper driving techniques prior to or following the driving test. Do not converse unnecessarily with the examiner during the test. The examiner will be giving you instructions and scoring your driving skill throughout the test. Upon completion of the driving test, the examiner will advise you how to correct any errors. If you fail the test, the examiner will advise you about what maneuvers you should practice to improve your driving skill and tell you when you may return for another test. Normally, you must wait seven days to retake the test. You will automatically fail for any of the following. 1. Violation of a traffic law. 2. Dangerous driving action. 3. Lack of cooperation or refusal to perform. 4. Contributing to a crash. 5. Inability to perform required driving task. 6. Driving ability does not meet required standards. Schedule your road test online. Alaska.gov slash DMV. DMV road test online system allows you to select a test type, i.e., standard license, motorcycle, commercial driver license. Select a DMV location, i.e., Anchorage, Bethel, Delta Junction, etc. Schedule your appointment on the calendar, test can be scheduled 24 hours prior to the test and up to 60 days in advance. Complete your applicant information. Put your cell phone and email and we will remind you of your appointment. Pay with a credit card and print your receipt. Receive a confirmation email with road test instructions and location directions. Receive a reminder email three days before your appointment. Reschedule your test up to 24 hours before the test. Cancel your test, sorry no refunds for cancelled tests. DMV will not refund the driver's test fee if you cancel your appointment within 72 hours of the test, fail to appear, fail the test due to an unsafe vehicle, carry improper registration, or lack proof of insurance. Third PRD testers Road tests may be given by a third-party testers at driving schools and at DMV business partner offices. Visit DMV's website www.alaska.gov slash DMV and find a list of them all. Third-party testers often have cars for you to use for the test and they have more testing hours and times than the DMV. Other information Photograph Your picture will be taken after all requirements for a license or permit have been successfully completed. When obtaining a photograph for your driver's license, all hats and head coverings, sunglasses, hair, and theatrical makeup must be removed. 
head coverings for religious or medical reasons may remain, but must be moved above the forehead to allow a full facial picture to be taken. Fees The following fees are charged upon initial issue of a license or permit. License type Standard Federally compliant Non-commercial driver license $20 $40 Commercial driver license $100 $120 Motorcycle license $20 $40 Instruction permit $15 $35 Duplicate license, if a license or permit is lost, stolen, destroyed, or is illegible, a duplicate may be obtained. Proper identification must be presented before a duplicate will be issued. Address or name change Individuals who have a license or permit and who have changed their name or address must notify the Division of Motor Vehicles, in writing, within 30 days of the change. You must provide court-ordered documentation to change a name or restore a previous name. A certified marriage certificate issued by Vital Statistics is also valid for a name change. Certified driving records, if your driving privileges have been suspended, cancelled, or revoked by another state, you must obtain written proof from that state showing the suspension or revocation has terminated before an Alaska license can be issued. Driving records, for a fee of $10 a driving record may be provided to the driver or a person designated by the driver. Generally, when a driver applies for insurance, the application will contain a statement authorizing the insurance company to receive a copy of the driving record of all individuals covered by the policy. Organ slash tissue donation, donating organs and tissues after a person dies allows several other people to live. There are many thousands of Americans on the organ transplant waiting list, without donations, many people will die. The state of Alaska has a strong organ and tissue donation program and encourages all Alaskans to consider this option. If you wish to sign up as an organ and tissue donor, you may indicate this on your application at the time your license is issued or renewed. There is never a cost to the family for donation, and all donation information is kept confidential. People under the age of 18 must have a parent or guardian's signature on their form. There is no wrong decision about becoming an organ and tissue donor. Please discuss your decision with your family, it is important that your loved ones know and respect your wishes. For more information, contact Life Alaska Donor Services at 1-800-719-LIFE or visit www.lifealaska.org. Financial Responsibility Laws Alaska has both financial responsibility and mandatory insurance laws. The purpose of these laws is to protect the motoring public from uninsured drivers on Alaska streets and highways. These laws allow the Division of Motor Vehicles to remove financially irresponsible drivers from the roads. Vehicle owners or drivers who are at fault in a collision are required by the financial responsibility law to pay for any damage or injury caused to another person. If there is a reasonable possibility that you may be found liable in a civil court, your privilege to drive will be suspended for up to three years. You can end your suspension, at any time during the three-year period, by making a financial settlement with the other parties involved in the crash. The mandatory insurance law requires either the vehicle owner or driver to carry liability insurance. The minimum amount of liability insurance coverage is $50,000-$100,000 for bodily injury or death and $25,000 for property damage. You must carry proof of liability insurance in your vehicle. Failure to provide proof of liability insurance to a law enforcement officer may result in a traffic citation or the vehicle may be impounded. If you are involved in a crash, which results in bodily injury or death to a person, or property damage in excess of $501, you must provide, within 15 days, proof of insurance to the Division of Motor Vehicles. Proof of insurance is required from all the drivers involved in the crash regardless of who caused the crash. This means you must provide the proof of insurance even if you did not cause the crash. The requirement to notify the Division of Motor Vehicles is in addition to any report given to the police or your insurance company. Normally the officer investigating the crash will give a certificate of insurance form to the drivers. 
The certificate of insurance forms are also available at any DMV office or on the state web page. HTTP colon slash slash www.dot.state.ak.us slash one two two zero nine v four slash JSP slash one two two zero nine main dot JSP if you were uninsured or you fail to provide the proof within fifteen days, your driver's license will be suspended for ninety days for a first occurrence and one year for a second occurrence. What to do in case of every crash? One stop at once. If you are blocking traffic, Move your vehicle out of the way if possible. 2. To prevent other crashes, warn other traffic. At night place flares or other signals on the road. Be careful not to walk out in front of other vehicles. 3. Help anyone who may be hurt. Do not remove an injured person unless absolutely necessary. Arrange for an ambulance if needed. Stop serious bleeding and keep the victim warm. 4. Exchange information with anyone else involved in the crash. Obtain the name, address, driver's license number, license plate number, telephone number, and name of insurance company of the other driver. Obtain the identity of as many witnesses as you can. 5. If there is an injury, or total property damage is $2,000 or more, and the crash occurred within a municipality, immediately contact the local police department. If the crash occurred outside of a municipality, immediately contact the Alaska State Troopers. 6. Cooperate with the investigating officer. 7. Mail a written report of the crash to the Department of Administration, Division of Motor Vehicles, P.O. Box 110,221, Juneau, Alaska, 99811-0221 within 10 days. This report is not required if the crash was investigated by a police officer. The crash report can also be completed online through My Alaska. https slash slash www.state.ak.us slash 12209 slash ak12209 main.jsp. 8. Upon striking an unattended vehicle, stop and attempt to locate the owner. If unable to do so leave a written note containing your name address, and telephone number. 9. A certificate of insurance is required on all crashes with property damage of $501 or more and must be submitted to DMV within 15 days, even if you submitted proof of insurance when law enforcement investigated the crash. You may obtain this form at any DMV office or on our website. A word about points. Alaska has a law aimed squarely at crash prevention through identification, control, and rehabilitation of recognized problem drivers. The law works this way. 1. Convictions for moving traffic violations are assigned numeric point values ranging from 2 points to 10 points. 2. Violations with the highest likelihood of contributing to crashes are assigned the higher point values. 3. Accumulating 12 points in 12 months or 18 points in 24 months requires the mandatory suspension or revocation of the driving privilege, regardless of the hardships involved. 4. No limited work purpose license is available should a suspension or revocation of the driving privilege be required. 5. Traffic law violators are sent a warning letter upon reaching the halfway mark towards a point suspension. Violators are advised to take steps to correct their poor driving behavior. 6. Credits may be earned for violation-free driving and slash or completion of a defensive driver course, DDC. A DDC may be taken once every 12 months for a point reduction. 7. A provisional license holder who accumulates 6 or more points in a 12-month period or 9 or more points in a 24-month period must complete a driver improvement course approved by the division. 8. Repeated traffic law violations may require a personal interview with a motor vehicle hearing officer. To keep their privilege to drive, drivers appearing for the interview may be required to comply with certain recommendations designed to improve their driving abilities. Points Driver's License Point Assignment If you are convicted of, or forfeit bail for, a moving traffic violation occurring in this, or any other state, Points will be entered on your Alaska driving record. Assigned points are based on the following schedule. Type of violation point. Value. Operating a motor vehicle while privileged to do so is suspended or revoked or in violation of limited license. 10. 
driving while intoxicated slash under the influence. 10. Reckless driving. 10. Refusal to provide a breath sample. 10. Fleeing or attempting to elude a police officer. 10. Speed contest. Racing. 10. Negligent homicide with a motor vehicle. 10. Manslaughter with a motor vehicle. 10. Assault with a motor vehicle. 10. Leaving the scene of a crash. 9. Negligent driving. 6. Failure to yield to authorized emergency vehicle. 6. Failure to stop for school bus while bus is loading or unloading. 6. Failure to obey official traffic control devices in school zone, playground, crosswalk, or park. 6. Driving without insurance. 6. Careless driving types of behavior. 4. Following too close. 4. Failure to stop or yield. 4. Minor operating after consuming. 6. Illegal passing in a traffic safety corridor. 4. All other moving violations. 2. Violation of oversize or overweight permits pertaining to restriction on hours of operation. 3. Speeding. In school zone or playground crosswalk. 6. 3 to 9 miles per hour over limit. 2. 10 to 19 miles per hour over limit. 4. 20 miles per hour or more over limit. 6. Violation of oversize or overweight permits pertaining to restriction of speed. 3 to 9 miles per hour over limit. 2. 10 to 19 miles per hour over limit. 4. 20 miles per hour or more over limit. 6. Suspensions and revocations. A suspended or revoked license must be turned into the department. A period of suspension or revocation will continue beyond the ending date unless you properly reinstate your driving privileges and you file proof of financial responsibility for the future. Anytime your privilege to drive is suspended, revoked, or limited, you will be required to carry financial responsibility for the future after the license action is over. Proof of financial responsibility for the future is usually provided to the Division of Motor Vehicles by submitting an SR-22 insurance filing form. This type of insurance filing requires the insurance company to notify the Division of Motor Vehicles if your liability insurance coverage lapses or is cancelled. Suspension The privilege of operating a motor vehicle is temporarily taken away. At the end of the suspension, and upon meeting any reinstatement requirements, you must apply for a duplicate license at one of our field offices. Driving privileges must be suspended for 1. Operating or owning an uninsured vehicle involved in a crash. 2. Repeated violations of the motor vehicle laws, accumulation of points. 3. Driving in violation of license restrictions. Revocation. The privilege of operating a motor vehicle is taken away and the license is revoked. At the end of revocation, when reinstatement requirements are met, a new license may be obtained. Driving privileges must be revoked for the following court convictions. 1. Driving while under the influence, or refusal to take a chemical test. 2. Driving while license is cancelled, suspended, or revoked. 3. Reckless driving. 4. Failure to stop and render aid at the scene when involved in a personal injury crash. 5. Perjury giving untrue information relating to motor vehicles to the department. 6. Unlawful flight by motor vehicle to avoid arrest. 7. Felony in connection with a motor vehicle causing injury or death such as manslaughter, negligent homicide, or assault with a vehicle. The Division of Motor Vehicles must revoke driving privileges, administratively, for the following offenses. 1. Refusal to submit to a chemical test following an arrest for driving under the influence. 2. Breath test result of 0.08 or higher, or 0.04 or higher if operating a commercial motor vehicle, following an arrest for driving under the influence. 3. Habitual violations of motor vehicle laws. 4. Two-point suspensions in a 24-month period. 5. Minors, under 21, 
operating a motor vehicle after consuming alcohol. Six minors, under 21, refusal to submit to chemical testing. Seven minors, under 21, using a false driver's license to obtain alcohol. Eight The Division of Motor Vehicles has the authority to take independent action against your driving privileges regardless of the outcome of any related court proceeding. A reinstatement fee is required following any suspension, revocation, or limitation. Implied Consent When you operate or drive a motor vehicle in the state of Alaska, you are consenting to a chemical test of your breath for the purpose of determining the alcohol concentration of your blood or breath. This is known as implied consent. The implied consent law allows law enforcement officers to require a sample of your breath for alcohol testing after a lawful arrest for driving under the influence, DUI. Law enforcement officers to require a sample of your blood or urine for alcohol or controlled substance testing if you are involved in a crash that causes death or serious physical injury to another person. Depending on your number of prior DUI offenses, Refusal to submit to chemical testing after lawful arrest can be a criminal misdemeanor or felony. Refusal to submit to chemical testing will result in two criminal charges DUI and refusal which the court can treat separately. During a revocation period, there is no limited work purpose driving privileges for a person who refuses to submit to chemical testing. Another aspect of the implied consent law allows a law enforcement officer to administer a preliminary breath test at the scene of an incident. If you have been in a crash or committed a moving violation and the law enforcement officer has probable cause to believe that your ability to operate a motor vehicle is impaired by alcohol, the officer can require you to provide a sample of your breath on a portable, preliminary, breath testing instrument. Refusal to submit to preliminary breath testing is an infraction. Alcohol drugs driving. Impaired drivers continue to kill someone every 51 minutes, nearly 28 people a day and almost 10,000 citizens a year. In the past decade, four times as many Americans died in drunk driving crashes as were killed in the Vietnam War. About 97% of Americans see drinking and driving as a threat to themselves and their families. Highway fatalities are one of the reasons Alaska has created tough laws against driving under the influence. Before you choose to drive after drinking, we want you to understand the possible consequences. For the cost of a first-time DUI you could go 11,370 miles in a taxi. That's almost halfway around the world. Before you drink and drive consider the consequences and alternatives. Consequences 3 days in jail, $270. Court fines, $1,500. Sentencing, $250 plus. Vehicle impound fee. $300 plus. Loss of car, $$, 30 days. Attorney, yours. Change of plea, $5,000 plus. Court proceedings, $3,500 to $5,000 and DMV hearing, $850. Attorney, court appointed, change of plea, $200 court proceedings, $500. SR22 insurance, $2,000 slash year dollar 10,000, 5 years. License fee, $20. License reinstatement fee, $200 slash 250 slash 500. Education compliance, $150 plus. Plus. Written test, free. Embarrassment, $$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$$
Average cost of an alternative ride $15. Administrative revocations. Fraudulent use of a driver's license. Alaska law allows the Division of Motor Vehicles to revoke the driving privilege of a person who uses a false or fraudulent driver's license to obtain alcohol. The revocation periods are 60 days for a first offense and one year for subsequent offenses. Under 21 violations minor operating a motor vehicle after consuming alcohol or refusal to submit to chemical testing. It is illegal in Alaska for a person under the age of 21 to consume alcohol. If you are under 21 and you operate a motor vehicle, aircraft, or watercraft after consuming alcohol in any amount, you can be arrested or cited for the offense of minor operating after consuming alcohol. If you refuse to take a chemical test of your breath, or your breath test result shows any quantity of alcohol, your driver's license, privilege to drive, or your privilege to obtain a license will be revoked by the Division of Motor Vehicles. This revocation will occur even if the criminal citation is dismissed, or you are found not guilty in court. The administrative revocation periods are 30 days for a first offense 60 days if you have been previously revoked for this offense 90 days if you have two previous revocations for this offense 1 year if you have three or more previous revocations for this offense Court Penalties a minor operating a motor vehicle after consuming alcohol or minor refusal to submit to chemical testing is an infraction. Upon conviction, the court must order community service and slash or a fine up to $1,000. Administrative revocations for Breath alcohol concentration results of 0.08 or more Refusal to submit to chemical testing if you operate a motor vehicle with a breath or blood alcohol concentration of 0.08 or more, by law you are presumed to be driving under the influence, DUI. If, after being arrested for DUI, you refuse to take a chemical test of your breath, or your breath test result is 0.08 or more, your driver's license, privilege to drive or your privilege to obtain a license will be revoked by the Division of Motor Vehicles. This revocation will occur even if the criminal charge of DUI or refusal is dismissed, or you are found not guilty in court. The administrative revocation periods are 90 days for a first offense, 1 year if you have been previously convicted of DUI or refusal, 3 years if you have 2 prior convictions of DUI or refusal, or 5 years if you have 3 or more prior convictions of DUI or refusal. Prior convictions of DWI slash DUI or refusal occurring in Alaska or another state within the last 15 years can be used to determine the revocation period. The DMV's civil action and the court action are two different procedures which you must deal with separately. During a revocation slash disqualification you may not drive the affected class of vehicle, get another license, or apply to get a driver's license in Alaska or any other state. You have the right to an administrative hearing to contest the revocation or disqualification. How to request an administrative hearing? You must ask for the hearing in writing. You may write your own letter or you may use the administrative hearing request form which can be found at any DMV or at the website below. When you submit your hearing request you must include a copy of the front of this form and your driver's license if it was not already surrendered to the law enforcement officer. Your request can be dropped off, faxed, or mailed to the Anchorage Driver Licensing Office at the address below. If you mail your request, the request must be postmarked within 7, 7, days of the date issued. Telephone requests are not accepted. You must apply within 7, 7, days of the date issued on the front side of this notice unless you qualify for a late hearing due to physical incapacity under AS 01.10.080, AS 28.15.166, B, AS 44.12.010 and slash or 2AAC 93.010, B. Once your hearing request is granted you will get paperwork describing what the laws, procedures and issues for the hearing are. If you make a timely request for a hearing and you have a valid license to drive, you will get a temporary license. Unless you are revoked by the court, the temporary license lets you drive until the date of the hearing. Court Revocations and Penalties Penalties for Driving Under the Influence, DUI 
refusal to submit to a chemical test convictions. Minimum mandatory penalties for misdemeanor convictions. Offense number. Revocation jail period. Sentence amount. Fine. First, 90 days, 3 days, $1,500. Second, 1 year, 20 days, $3,000. Third, 3 years, 60 days, $4,000. Fourth, 5 years, 120 days, $5,000. Fifth, five years, 240 days, $6,000. Sixth or more, five years, 360 days, $7,000. Minimum mandatory penalties for Felony convictions A person arrested for DUI must be charged with a felony if, within 10 years of the arrest date, the person has been previously convicted two or more times since January 1st. 1996. Offense number. Revocation jail period. Sentence amount. Fine. Third, lifetime, 120 days, $10,000. Fourth, lifetime, 240 days, $10,000. Fifth or more, lifetime, 360 days, $10,000. Facts you should know about alcohol. 1. A person's judgment is the first ability impaired by drinking alcohol. 2. Alcohol is a depressant, not a stimulant. It slows normal reflexes, interferes with judgment, reduces alertness, and impairs vision. 3. If you drive after drinking, the probability of a crash increases with each drink. 4. Motor vehicle crashes involving young people who have been drinking occur at lower average blood alcohol levels than do those of middle-aged or older drivers. 5. The type of alcohol consumed makes no difference in the effect of alcohol on the physical and mental changes that take place within the body when alcohol is consumed. It's the amount of alcohol which enters the body that counts. The same amount of alcohol is present in 12 ounces of beer as in a single shot, 1.5 ounce, of 80 proof alcohol or 4 ounces of wine. 6. Alcohol affects a person differently at different times. Physical and emotional condition other drugs, even the amount of food in the stomach causes alcohol to affect a person differently. 7. After drinking there is nothing you can do but wait. Black coffee, fresh air, food, or a cold shower might wake you up, but they won't sober you up. Alcohol is burned up by the liver and eliminated from the body through the kidneys and lungs. Only time will help. 8. Alcohol is medically termed a drug and a depressant. The combined use of alcohol and other drugs may be more dangerous to health and to highway safety than the effects of either the alcohol or drugs alone. Know your limits. As mentioned before, the effects of alcohol on driving depends on many different factors, food you've eaten or medication you've taken, mental state, degree of fatigue, strength of drinks. Therefore, it is difficult to know just how much you can drink before you drive it takes an average of one hour to cancel the effects of one drink. Therefore, it takes about four hours to cancel the intoxicating effects of four drinks. The best policy is to not drive if you have been drinking. Ignition Interlock Device, IID When convicted of a DUI or refusal, use of an ignition interlock device is required on any vehicle you operate. If you have been convicted of only one DUI or refusal you will need to have the IID installed for a minimum of six, six, months. The chart below shows the periods of IID installation for a person with multiple convictions. As 28.35.030, B, and slash or as 28.35.032, G. DUI slash refusal convictions. Period of IID installed. First. 6 months. Second, 12 months. Third, 18 months. Fourth, 24 months. Fifth, 30 months. You are responsible for IID installation and maintenance costs. It is also your responsibility to show proof of IID installation and financial responsibility, State Route 22 insurance, when reinstating your driving privilege. How drinking affects a driver. When you drink, 
the alcohol quickly reaches the bloodstream from the stomach, and quickly begins to affect the functioning of the brain. It slows reactions, interferes with vision, and reduces your sense of responsibility. Judgment, hearing, speech, and balance are impaired in relation to the level of alcohol in the blood. At the same time, alcohol creates a false sense of confidence, and a feeling your driving is not affected. The fact is that every additional drink lowers your effectiveness behind the wheel. It also puts you in a higher risk category. If you drink and drive, you may lose your driving privileges, and worse yet, perhaps your life, or take someone else's life. Think about it. It's not worth it. Alcohol Drugs Driving Alcohol use is a significant factor in fatal motor vehicle crashes in Alaska. Almost 45% of all traffic deaths each year involve alcohol. Each year, fellow Alaskans will die on the highway as a direct result of drinking and driving. It is known that other drugs, and especially the combination of alcohol and drugs, contribute to a significant number of motor vehicle crashes each year. For this reason, Alaska has strengthened its DUI driving under the influence, law. 0.02% Judgment Inhibitions 0.10% Vision Speech Balance 0.06% Reaction Coordinati on 0.16% Walking Standing 0.08% Serious deterioration in driving performance 0.40% Unconscious Possible coma and on verge of death Drugs There are other drugs or substances that also interfere with a person's ability to drive safely. Here are a few things you should remember. 1. When taking prescription medicine Ask your doctor about any possible side effects that relate to driving. Two drugs, including some allergy remedies and cold pills which you can buy without prescription may contain compounds that can affect your driving. Three amphetamines are used in stimulants and diet pills. Overdosage of these, and other drugs like tranquilizers or sedatives, can make driving dangerous. Four never drive after using illegal drugs. These are especially dangerous because there is usually no way to be certain of their strength or purity. 5. Alaska law also forbids driving under the influence of any controlled substance, which includes narcotic and non-narcotic drugs, not just illegal drugs. The penalties for driving under the influence of a controlled substance are the same as outlined previously for driving under the influence of alcohol. 6. Drugs have been shown to impair driving ability. Certain prescribed drugs can cause drowsiness and decreased alertness. The combination of other drugs and alcohol increases the effects of each individual drug. It has been estimated that at least 25% of the prescription drugs used today are capable of interacting with alcohol. Therefore, it is important for you to be cautious about drinking alcoholic beverages if you are taking medication. Such combinations can be fatal, especially if you are driving. Seat Belt Use When worn, safety belts do make your trip safer they do help save lives. What do you know about safety belts? 1. I will have a better chance of survival in a burning or submerged car if I am wearing my safety belt. True. False. 2. I don't need a safety belt when I'm traveling at low speeds or going on a short trip. True. False. 3. When I have my lap belt fastened. I don't need to fasten my shoulder. True. False. For the number one killer of children under five in America is automobile crashes. True. False. Five I might be saved if I'm thrown clear of the car and crash. True. False. Six A child riding in a car is safest in its mother's arms. True. False. 7 A 30 miles per hour head-on collision unleashes crash dynamic forces approximately 20 times the force of gravity, 20 gs. True. False. 8 My safety belts are always loose, so they must not operate properly. True. False. 9 My best defense against a drunk driver is my safety belt.
True. False. Answers below. Facts you should know about safety belts. 1. Collisions involving fire or submersion make up less than one half of 1% of all traffic collisions. 2. Your chances of survival in a burning or submerged vehicle are far greater if you are wearing your safety belt because you are most likely to remain conscious and, therefore, more able to escape the vehicle. 3. More than 80% of all collisions occur at speeds less than 40 miles per hour, and 3 out of 4 collisions causing death occur within 25 miles of home. 4. Although your lap belt helps, it will not prevent serious injury from striking your head and chest on the steering wheel, dashboard, and windshield. A lap and shoulder belt offer you the best possible protection in the event of a crash. 5. Auto collisions are the number one killer and crippler of children under the age of 5. 6. The chances of being killed are almost 25 times greater if you are thrown from the car. 7. Holding your child in your arms will not protect your child. A 15-pound infant will suddenly weigh 450 pounds because of the forces unleashed in just a 30 mph collision. 8. An unrestricted adult can crush a child held in the arms during a collision. 9. Loose belts do not indicate that the belts are inoperative. Belts manufactured after 1974 utilize an inertia reel that makes the belt system car sensitive, meaning that they lock when the car slows down too quickly. These belt systems were designed for passenger comfort. 10 safety belts offer you the best possible protection in a car crash and, therefore, are your best defense against the drunk driver. 11 A 30 mph head-on collision unleashes forces approximately 20 times the force of gravity, 20 gs. Under these conditions, objects, including passengers, can be thrown forward with a force equal to 30 times their own weight. 12 Small children need special protection. In a collision, a lap belt may put too much pressure on a small child's hips and abdomen. Car safety seats are designed to distribute crash forces over a large area of the body. 13 Only an approved dynamically crash-tested safety designed child car seat can provide adequate crash protection. All such seats conform to Federal Standard 213-80. 14. A child restrained in a car safety seat is better behaved and less likely to distract the driver and create a hazard within the car. Safety belt use is required by law. Alaska Law is 28.05.095 requires everyone in a motor vehicle to use a safety belt. Drivers must wear a safety belt. The driver is also responsible for all passengers under the age of 16 years. The law requires federally approved child restraint devices for passengers under 4 years old. Passengers aged from 4 up to 16 must wear a seat belt or a child restraint device, whichever is age appropriate. A driver may not transport a child under the age of 16 in a motor vehicle unless the driver has provided the required safety device and properly secured each child as described in this section. Please see exceptions below. A child. 1 less than one year of age or a child one year of age or older who weighs less than 20 pounds shall be properly secured in a rear-facing child safety seat that meets or exceeds standards of the United States Department of Transportation and is used in accordance with the manufacturer's instructions. 2. One or more years of age but less than five years of age who weighs 20 pounds or more shall be properly secured in a child restraint device that meets or exceeds the standards of the United States Department of Transportation and is used in accordance with the manufacturer's instructions. 3. Over four years of age but less than eight years of age who is less than 57 inches in height and weighs 20 or more pounds but less than 65 pounds shall be properly secured in a booster seat that is secured by a seat belt system or by another child passenger restraint system that meets or exceeds the standards of the United States Department of Transportation and is used in accordance with the manufacturer's instructions. 4. Over four years of age who exceeds the height or weight requirements in 3 of this subsection shall be properly secured in a seat belt. 5. 8 years of age but less than 16 years of age who does not exceed the height and weight requirements in, 3, of this subsection shall be properly secured in a child safety device approved for a child that size by the United States Department of Transportation or in a safety belt, whichever is appropriate for the particular child as determined solely by the driver.
there are exceptions to the seat belt law. One vehicles built prior to 1965 which did not have safety belts as original equipment and are not classified as a custom collector vehicle. Two vehicle operators acting in the course of employment delivering mail or newspapers from inside the vehicle to roadside boxes. Three passengers in a school bus unless the bus is required to be equipped with safety belts. Four passengers in an emergency vehicle. Five people or a class of people exempt by the Commissioner of Public Safety, as defined by regulations. A driver may be fined up to $50 and may receive two demerit points on their operator's license for failure to restrain passengers under age 16. Adult violations are subject to a $15 fine. A provision of the law allows the court to waive the $15 fine for persons convicted under this law if that person donates $15 to the EMS organization. Convicted drivers pay the fine to an EMS organization listed in the current version of the Alaska Emergency Medical Services Directory. Drivers send a copy of the citation along with the receipt from the EMS organization to the court. Child Restraint Systems The number one cure for the greatest killer of children. After the critical early weeks of life for a newborn baby, automobile crashes are the leading cause of death for American children with tens of thousands more children being seriously injured. Small children, unless they are properly restrained, become flying missiles until a stationary object stops their forward progress. It is a tragic fact that most deaths and injuries resulting from automobile crashes could have been avoided if parents had taken the time to properly buckle up their children in an approved child restraint system. There are many types of child restraint systems available at department stores, children's shops, and even through some mail-order catalogs. Shop around for the car seat that will best suit your child and your car before your baby is born. Ensure your baby's first ride home from the hospital is a safe ride. Alaska Child Passenger Safety Coalition is comprised of representatives from numerous public and private agencies throughout the state that share a common goal of protecting children traveling on the roadways of Alaska. Members include healthcare professionals, firefighters, paramedics, law enforcement officers, injury prevention professionals, health and safety personnel, educators, parents, businesses, foundations, policymakers, and volunteers. Visit www.carsatsac.org for more information. Remember, once your children are secured and safe, don't you forget your safety belt. Distracted Driving Here are 10 tips for managing some of the most common distractions. 1. Turn it off. Turn your phone off or switch it to silent mode before you get in the car. 2. Spread the word. Set up a special message to tell callers that you are driving and you'll get back to them as soon as possible, or sign up for a service that offers this. 3. Pull over. If you need to make a call, pull over to a safe area first. 4. Use your passengers. Ask a passenger to make the call for you. 5x the text. Don't ever text and drive, surf the web or read your email while driving. It is dangerous and against the law in Alaska. 6. Know the law. Familiarize yourself with state and local laws before you get in the car. All bases in Alaska do not allow phone usage while driving. Some states and localities prohibit the use of handheld cell phones. GHSA offers a handy chart of state laws on its website, www.ghsa.org slash html slash state info slash law slash cell phone underscore laws dot html 7. Prepare Review maps and directions before you start the drive. If you need help when you are on the road, ask a passenger to help or pull over to a safe location to review the map slash directions again. 8. Secure your pets Pets can be a big distraction in the car. Always secure your pets properly before you start to drive. 9. Keep the kids safe. Pull over to a safe location to address situations with your children in the car. 10. Focus on the task at hand. Refrain from smoking, eating, drinking, reading and any other activity that takes your mind and eyes off the road. Traffic safety facts. An examination of driver distraction as recorded in NHTSA databases. September 2008. Control of vehicle. A good driver.
always wears a safety belt and requires all passengers to buckle up, too. Is constantly aware of traffic conditions around them. Drives as required by law and traffic condition. Drives courteously and defensively. Keeps their vehicle mechanically safe. Is physically competent and mentally alert. Be aware of. 1. Alleys. 2. Pedestrians. 3. Cars in front. 4. Cars behind. 5. Parked cars. 6. Intersections right. 7. Intersections left. 8. Bicycles. 9. Cars approaching. 10. Children. More fatal crashes occurred during daylight hours with normal surface, clear weather conditions, and the vehicle in good mechanical condition than under any other condition. The driver is the greatest singular cause of traffic crashes. You are issued a driver's license based on the premise that you will obey the laws and keep your vehicle under control at all times. When you are able to direct and regulate the course and speed of your vehicle and you have the ability to slow or stop when you wish to do so you are exercising control of your motor vehicle. You must control yourself before you can control a vehicle. Driving with insufficient sleep, anger, or distractions are examples of factors that will impair your ability to safely control a vehicle. Drivers to exercise due care. Every driver of a vehicle must exercise care to avoid colliding with a pedestrian, an animal or another vehicle. You must be able to stop if necessary and shall slow down when circumstances require. Some circumstances to watch for are as follows. One person walking on or along the roadway. Two animals being led, ridden, or driven on or along the highway. Three a railroad crossing, intersection, bridge, sharp turn, curve, or steep downgrade. 4. Red reflectors, red flags, or flares. Burns a bright red. 5. Orange flags and signs indicate high hazard area, maintenance and construction. Backing. Don't depend on mirrors. Instead, with your left hand at the top of the steering wheel, turn your body and head to the right and look out the rear window. Move the wheel in the direction you want the rear of your vehicle to go. Back slowly and keep your eyes moving to all sides of your car. Always yield to vehicles or people on the street or sidewalk and be prepared to stop. It is suggested your speed not exceed 5 miles per hour when backing. Obstruction to driver's view. A person may not drive with more people in the front seat than the seat was designed for or with objects that interfere with the driver's control of the vehicle or view. TV, laptops, texting, etc. Alaska has a law aimed at reducing driver distraction. It is illegal to drive with a visual screen device operating. Texting while driving is prohibited by the law. Careless today. Carless tomorrow. The rear end crash is one of the major crash problems. Traffic experts are convinced that rear end crashes can be prevented if drivers will observe a few simple precautions when following other vehicles. What the law says about following. A driver of a motor vehicle may not follow another vehicle more closely than is reasonable and prudent, having due regard for speed, traffic, and conditions of the roadway. You also have a duty to yield to following vehicles. As 28.35.140 requires drivers on a two-lane roadway outside of an urban area to safely pull over when there are five or more vehicles immediately behind. How to avoid rear-end collisions. One four-second rule. The easiest way to calculate a safe following distance is by the four-second interval method. Watch the back of the vehicle ahead of you pass some definite point. Then count 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004. That's four seconds. If you pass the same point before you are finished counting, you are following too closely. When towing a trailer or the road surface is wet or slippery, Increase the 4 seconds to 6 or more. You also can use the 4 second rule at night to make sure you are not overdriving your headlights. 2. Watch for brake lights. Shift your foot to the brake pedal promptly so you are ready to stop if necessary. 3. Watch for shrinking distance between your car and the one ahead. This warns of impending crash with the vehicle ahead. 4. Watch for stopped and standing vehicles ahead. Some drivers find it difficult to determine whether a distant car is in motion or stopped. 
Learn to relate vehicles to fixed objects. 5. Look for problems that might develop for the driver ahead of you. This makes it easy to react in time. How to keep from being struck? Just as important as avoiding a crash with the vehicle ahead is to avoid being hit by the vehicle behind. To lessen the likelihood of a rear-end crash, a driver who is stopped or in the act of stopping can do a great deal. 1. Be sure brake lights are clean and working properly. Flash brake lights when preparing to stop. 2. Know what is going on behind you. Have an outside rear vision mirror and keep rear window clean and clear of frost and snow. 3. Signal well in advance for lane changes, stops, or turns. The person behind you can't read your mind. 4. Slow down gradually over a long distance to give the drivers behind more time and space in which to react. 5. Keep pace with the traffic within limitations of weather conditions and speed limits. 4. Second rule. 3. 1. Start counting 1001 as vehicle ahead passes tree. 3. 2. You should count 1004 before reaching the tree. Speed and stopping distances. Total minimum stopping distances with perfect four wheel brakes on best type of road surface under favorable conditions. Thinking distance. Braking distance. Miles per hour. Feet per second. 20, 29, 22, 24, 46 feet. 30, 44. 33, 54, 87 feet. 40, 59, 44, 96, 140 feet. 50, 74, 55, 146, 201 feet. 60, 88, 66, 215, 281 feet. 70, 103, 77, 290. 367 feet. Note, while this chart recommends the use of the 4 second rule, 13 AAC 02.090 requires at a minimum the 2 second rule. Speed, impact, and braking distance. It is a well known fact that the faster you drive, the greater the impact or striking power of your vehicle. A fact not generally understood is how much greater the striking power of a vehicle is when you double the speed from 20 to 40 miles per hour. It is commonly believed that the striking power of a vehicle would likewise be doubled. This is not true. The impact is four times greater at 40 miles per hour than at 20 miles per hour. The braking distance is also four times longer. Triple the speed from 20 to 60 miles per hour and the impact and braking distance are nine times greater. Increase the speed to 80 miles per hour and the impact and braking distance are 16 times greater than at 20 miles per hour. Respect the potential destructive power of your vehicle when you increase speed. Speed properly related to traffic, road, and weather conditions, and skillfully controlled by a thoughtful driver need not be hazardous. In the hands of a thoughtless, uninformed driver it is deadly. Speed laws. The following speed limits are established by law as the maximum to be driven under favorable conditions on highways which are not otherwise posted. See speed limitation below. Business District, 20 mph asterisk. Alley, 15 miles per hour. Asterisk. School Zone, 20 mph asterisk. Residential District, 25 mph asterisk. Any other roadway. 55 asterisk. Asterisk local authorities or the State Department of Transportation and Public Facilities may alter speed limits. 13 AAC 02.280. Speed limits on selected highways may be posted at 65. Speed limitation law. When driving conditions are less than ideal a person operating a motor vehicle on the highway shall drive at a careful and prudent speed no greater than what is reasonable and proper having due regard for the following conditions. A. Traffic when traffic is heavy, congested, or moving slowly. B. Surface when the road surface is rough, icy, wet, or otherwise provides poor traction. C. Width when the width of the roadway reduces your margin of safety. D. Weather when weather conditions affect sight, distance, and traction. Rain, snow, fog, dust, or smoke. 
A person may not drive a vehicle upon a highway at a speed greater than will permit them to stop within the assured clear distance ahead. Motor-driven cycle speed is limited by intensity of headlamp. Lamps reveal person or vehicle at 100 feet 20 miles per hour or less. Lamps reveal person or vehicle at 200 feet 21 to 29 miles per hour. Lamps reveal person or vehicle at 300 feet 30 miles per hour or more. Slow speed A driver may not drive at such slow speed as to hold back or block the normal and reasonable flow of traffic. Reckless driving A willful disregard for the safety of persons or property. Conviction will result in a license revocation. On multi-lane highways if you drive slower than other traffic, use the right, outside lane, except when passing. Traffic safety corridors to promote traffic safety, certain portions of the highway may be designated as traffic safety corridors. Fines for traffic offenses occurring in the corridor are doubled. Signaling A hand and arm or directional signal of intention to turn or move a vehicle right or left must be given continuously during the last 100 feet traveled by the vehicle before turning. As a safety precaution, the signal may be given from a greater distance when warranted by traffic conditions or the higher speeds of your vehicle. Never stop or suddenly decrease the speed of your vehicle without signaling your intentions for the benefit of the other drivers. Be sure turn signals are clean and free from dust, dirt, ice, or snow. Protect yourself help others. Signal your intentions. Left turn. Right turn. Stop or slow. Use hand signals when the sun is shining brightly or when a line of cars following you could obscure your turn signal light. Be sure that all turn signal lights are clean and free from dust, dirt, ice, or snow. Alaska law requires you to cancel your directional signal light after you use it. Your unintended signal still means you are turning to the other drivers. You might tempt another driver to turn or drive across in front of you. Failure to signal is dangerous and inconsiderate. Your signal alerts other drivers to your actions. Bicyclists are also required to use hand signals to signal a turn. Towing When towing triples per 13 AAC 04.205, e, no person may operate a motor vehicle on the roadway towing more than one vehicle unless the towing vehicle weighs more than 15,000 pounds, has three or more axles, and is equipped with an air brake system for both the towing and towed vehicles. Left Turn Turn around these points. Don't loop or cut corners. 1. Get into proper lane well ahead of turn. 2. Signal intention to turn for at least 100 feet. 3. Yield to all oncoming vehicles. 4. Yield to pedestrians. 5. Turn into proper lane. 6. Don't loop or cut corners. 1. Watch traffic light cycle. 2. Wait for oncoming vehicles before entering the intersection. Don't proceed past the center of intersection. 3. Keep front wheels straight while waiting. 4. Look out of left window for pedestrians and check turn path. 2. Way street to one way street. 1. Make proper two way approach. 2. Signal intention to turn for at least 100 feet. 3. Yield to all traffic. 4. Do not turn before reaching the crosswalk. 5. Look out of left window for pedestrians and check turn path. 6. Turn sharply into first lane. Do not cut. Do not turn from this lane. One way street to two way street. One make approach in the traffic lane furthermost to the left on one way street. Two signal intention to turn for at least 100 feet. Three don't start turn at the crosswalk. Four drive into the intersection and then turn sharply into lane shown. One way. Be alert for one way street signs on traffic light posts and stop signs. Left turn, right turn. Left turn one way street to one way street. One make approach in the traffic lane furthermost to the left of the street. Two signal intention to turn for at least 100 feet. Three look out of left window for pedestrians and check turn path. Four turn sharply into the first lane on the left side of the one way street. Do not turn into the outer lane. Right turn two way street to two way street. 1. Signal intention to turn for at least 100 feet. 2. Get into proper lane well ahead of turn. 3. Look out of right side of windshield for pedestrians and check turn path. 
4. Be alert for vehicles ahead that are turning right and may stop for pedestrians. Signaling for turns prevents rear-end collisions. Drivers waiting on side streets appreciate your turn signal. 3-point turn Unless prohibited, you may use the 3-point turn to turn around on a narrow street. 1. Signal your intention to turn right. Pull over to the far right and stop. 2. Signal your intention to turn left. Check for your traffic. 3. If traffic is clear, turn left crossing the street until your vehicle is pointing at the curb or left shoulder of the road. 4. Check again for your traffic. Turn your wheels to the right as far as they will go. Back up to the opposite side of the street. 5. Stop, check again for traffic. Drive forward to complete your turn around maneuver. Be careful when making this turn. Watch for and yield to approaching traffic or pedestrians. For extra safety, you can always sound your horn before backing. Intersections Two basic laws govern the approach to and movement through uncontrolled intersections. Control of vehicle For approaching intersections, drivers shall have their vehicle under control. Drivers shall reduce their speed to a reasonable and proper rate when approaching and traversing an intersection. Uncontrolled intersections When you are driving on a street or highway which is not protected with stop signs, yield signs, or traffic lights, you are driving on an unprotected route and the intersections are uncontrolled. At such times you are required to slow down and have your vehicle under control at a cross street or a cross road. Approaching from the right does not excuse you from slowing down and having your vehicle under control. Right of way law For going through an uncontrolled intersection when two vehicles approach an uncontrolled intersection in such position and time that there is danger of collision, the driver of the vehicle on the left must yield to the driver of the vehicle on the right. If you are the driver approaching from the right do not assume that you have the right of way. You have the right of way only when the other driver gives it to you, and only if another vehicle is not already within the intersection. Intersections Roundabouts Roundabouts, sometimes called traffic circles are circular intersections designed to promote safe and efficient traffic flow without necessarily stopping the flow of traffic. In a roundabout vehicles travel counterclockwise around a raised center island where approaching traffic must yield to traffic in the circle. How to drive in a roundabout? Slow down as you approach the circle. Roundabouts are designed for speeds of about 15 to 20 miles per hour. Always enter to the right of the center island. Enter when there is a gap in traffic. Once inside, do not stop. Follow directions on signs or pavement markings about which lane to use. If there is more than one lane going in the same direction, make sure you know where you want to go and are in the proper lane before entering. Yield to any traffic already in the circle. If another vehicle arrives at the same time, yield to the vehicle if it is on your right. Yield to all pedestrians and bicyclists in the roundabout. You may exit at any street or continue around if you miss your exit. For more on roundabouts visit, http colon slash slash dot alaska dot gov slash sdwd day slash dcs traffic slash roundabouts dot shtml. Intersections You must yield in these situations. Vehicles approaching at same time. Yield to vehicle on the right. Yield to all traffic on the protected route. Stop if necessary. When light turns green, yield to pedestrians and vehicles caught in intersection. Yield to all traffic that is so close as to be a hazard, and to vehicle already in intersection. Stop and yield to all traffic on the protected route. Stop and yield when entering a street or road from alley, driveway, or building. Stops required. Check mirror. Allow plenty of time and distance to stop. One stop sign stop behind the crosswalk, at painted stop line or behind the intersecting highway shoulder line. Yield to traffic before entering. Two red flashing light stop, then proceed when the way is clear and it is safe to do so. Three railroad crossing gate or flag person stop until crossing gates are raised or until flag person discontinues signal. 4. Red light stop when traffic signal facing you is red. 
5. Yield right of way sign yield and stop if necessary for traffic approaching an intersection or for a pedestrian. 6. Entering highway stop and yield to traffic when entering highway from driveway, building, or alley. 7. School bus stop when red flashing lights are in operation and stop arm is extended. Drivers meeting and following bus must stop. 8. Uncontrolled intersection stop when signals are not working. Passing safely. It is equally important to know when not to pass as well as when to pass. Collisions resulting from improper passing are often fatal since the impact force is great in this type of collision. The decision as to whether or not to pass another vehicle is determined by the judgment and attitude of the driver. Be patient. Passing is not a game. Learn the following passing rules well and practice them each time you consider passing another vehicle. 1. Stay well back from vehicle ahead for better sight distance. Check rear vision mirror. Signal left turn to left lane. 2. Check well ahead for no passing zone and oncoming vehicles. Do not swing out across center line for a look. 3. Sound your horn to warn the driver ahead of your intention to pass. 4. Pass on left at a safe distance and do not return to right lane until safely clear of overtaken vehicle. 5. Signal right turn to return to right lane. Be sure to cancel signal light. Do not pass. 1. On the right shoulder of the highway. 2. On approaching a hill or curve where there is not sufficient clear view ahead. 3. Unless the pass can be completed without interfering with the safety of oncoming vehicles and before solid yellow line appears in your traffic lane. When being passed it is unlawful to increase your speed. 4. If the solid yellow line is in your lane. 5. A school bus when its red flashing lights are operating, and the stop arm is extended. 6. When approaching within 100 feet of or when traversing an intersection or railroad crossing, or when approaching within 100 feet of a posted narrow bridge, viaduct, or tunnel. Center lanes are reserved for left turns only. You may not use a center lane for passing. The end of a no passing zone does not mean it is safe to pass. It means there is increased visibility ahead. Signs Traffic signs speak a special kind of language to the driver. Many fatal crashes occur when a driver does not heed a clearly visible traffic sign. Traffic signs are driving aids. Obey them. How signs can help you be a better driver. 1. They warn of conditions ahead that require caution or extra alertness for safe operation of the vehicle. 2. They guide drivers to their destination by identifying the route e. 3. They inform drivers of regulations. How you can become a better sign driver. 1. Study the sign section of this manual and associate the meaning of each sign with the behavior that is expected of you as a driver. 2. Look for your signs when you drive. Look far ahead. Move your eyes. It is easy for a stare driver to miss traffic signs. 3. Obey all signs. The result of good sign observance is doing the right thing at the right time. Regulatory sign black or red on white. 1. Regulatory signs indicate an instruction for the driver that must be understood and obeyed. State statute, regulation, or local ordinance backs them. Violation of the instructions can result in issuance of a traffic citation to the violator. 2. Obey the law indicated. Stop sign white on red. 1. Make a complete stop before entering intersection or at stop line. Stop in back of crosswalk. Look both right and left for traffic and pedestrians. 2. Yield right of way. Yield sign red and white. 1. Slow down as required when approaching this sign. 2. Look both left and right, and yield to traffic and pedestrians. 3. Stop required when necessary to avoid pedestrian or traffic on protected street. Do not enter sign red and white. 1. Do not proceed beyond this sign which faces traffic entering a roadway or ramp in the wrong direction. 2. A white on red wrong way sign may be placed further down the prohibited direction. Warning sign black on yellow. 1. Warning signs alert drivers to actual or potential dangerous conditions ahead. 2. Extra caution should be observed at all warning signs. 3. Most warning signs imply a driver should decrease the speed of the vehicle. 4. Read and adjust your driving to the situation. Guide sign white on green. 1. Destination, route guidance, and place names are provided to you on guide signs. 
2. Pay special attention to mileage information. Construction and maintenance sign black on orange. 1. Work in the road and temporary conditions requiring special alertness are indicated by these signs. 2. Adjust your speed and prepare for special conditions. School sign black on yellow. 1. Five-sided signs warn of school areas and school crosswalks requiring reduced speed. 2. Prepare to stop for pedestrians. Service sign white on blue. 1. Services for your convenience such as gas, phone, food, lodging, rest areas, campgrounds, and litter barrels may be marked with white on blue signs. Do not exceed posted speed. Do not turn right on red signal. Do not park to right of this sign. Do not drive any vehicle exceeding weight limit beyond this sign. Keep to the right of divided highway. A red circle with a diagonal slash indicates prohibited movement. Trucks must use right lane. Do not stop, stand, or park as directed by this sign. Merge left. Road narrows ahead. Two-way road. Keep right of approaching traffic. Use center lane only for left turns. Make a left turn when in a lane below or facing this sign. Reduce speed to 20 as marked for school crosswalks. Reduce speed for slippery roadway after rains, frost, etc. Do not walk or bike on any part of the right of way. Keep right of this sign. Travel only as indicated on the posted street. One way operation on bridge may require stop ahead. Prepare to stop at traffic signal ahead. Be alert for traffic merging from the right. Slow to posted speed on ramp. Bike route extends to right. Watch for bicyclists. Prepare to stop for flagger ahead. Space reserved for persons with disability plates or placard. Steep downgrade ahead requires trucks to slow and shift to lower gear. Take curve to the right at advisory speed. Rest area open to the right. Adjust driving for construction area 500 feet ahead. Roundabout. Overheight vehicles take another route around restricted clearance. Adjust speed to advisory speed on winding road ahead. Slow to 20 for school children. Be alert for crew working on or adjacent to roadway. Roundabout. Be alert for deer crossing unexpectedly. Make sharp turn to right in front of this sign. Road closed to all traffic. Detour. All traffic detour to right in front of this sign. Be alert for caribou crossing unexpectedly. Signs within work areas. Barricades, vertical panels, cones, tubes, and drums are the most commonly used devices to alert drivers of unusual or potentially dangerous conditions in highway and street work areas. They are used to guide drivers safely through the work zone. At night they are often equipped with flashing or steady burn lights. Large flashing or sequencing arrow panels may be used in work zones both day and night to guide drivers into certain traffic lanes, and to inform them that part of the road or street ahead of them is closed. Flag persons are often provided in highway and street work zones to stop, slow, or guide traffic safely through the area. Flag persons generally wear orange vests, shirts or jackets, and use red flags or stop slash slow paddles to direct traffic through work zones. Traffic stop. Traffic proceed. Slow moving vehicles. Recognize this sign. Some day, or night, it may save your life. Look for it. Slow moving vehicle emblem. This safety device is required on all slow moving, 25 miles per hour or less, vehicles. Here's how this SMV emblem can protect you. By day. During daylight, the bright fluorescent orange solid triangle in the center of the SMV emblem is highly visible. It gains the attention and recognition of approaching motorists at distances exceeding one-fifth mile. They have ample time to slow down to avoid a crash. By night. At night, the reflective red border of the SMV emblem glows brilliantly in the path of approaching auto headlights. The unique, hollow red triangle immediately identifies a slow-moving vehicle. Traffic signals. Red ball. Stop behind the crosswalk, stop line, or if none, before entering the intersection. Right turns are permitted only after a full stop, when the turn can be made safely, 
and is not restricted by a no turn on red sign. Yellow ball. A red light is about to appear. Stop unless you are already within the intersection, or so close to the intersection that you cannot stop safely. If the light changes to yellow as you enter the intersection, you may proceed with extreme caution. Green ball. Go if the intersection is clear. Make any legal maneuver not specifically prohibited by a traffic control device. Yield to pedestrians and vehicles still in or who enter the intersection with the right of way, such as pedestrians traveling across the roadway with the green light. Yield to vehicles going straight through the intersection in the opposite direction if you are making a left turn. Red arrow. Do not make the movement indicated by the arrow. Stop behind the crosswalk, stop line, or if none, before entering the intersection. No turns are allowed until the arrow changes to green or flashing yellow. Yellow arrow. A red light is about to appear. Stop movement in the indicated direction unless you are already within the intersection or so close to the intersection that you cannot stop safely. In that case, proceed through the intersection making the indicated turn. Green arrow. Make the movement indicated by the arrow. This movement has the right of way and should not conflict with pedestrians or other vehicles. However, observe caution and yield to those who are still in or enter the intersection with the right of way. Flashing red ball. Stop behind the crosswalk, stop line, or if none, before entering the intersection. Look in all directions for approaching traffic and pedestrians and proceed only when it is safe to do so. Individual flashing red balls, beacons, may be suspended over the roadway or located above stop signs. They supplement the sign where there may be a need for special emphasis. Flashing red arrow. Stop behind the crosswalk, stop line, or if none, before entering the intersection. Look in all directions for approaching traffic and pedestrians and proceed only when it is safe to do so. Flashing yellow ball. Reduce speed and exercise caution. Yield to pedestrians and vehicles in the intersection. Flashing yellow balls, beacons, may be suspended over the roadway or installed with signs where there is a need for special emphasis. Flashing yellow arrow. Exercise caution while making the movement indicated by the arrow. Yield to oncoming traffic, pedestrians, and vehicles in the intersection. Unlit signal head. If a signal does not have any of its bulbs functioning and there is no other signal head in operation for your direction and there is no one directing traffic, the intersection is uncontrolled. You must stop. Yield to traffic approaching the intersection on your right. Exercise extreme caution and proceed only when it is safe to do so. Report this condition to the nearest police department as soon as possible. See stops required section of manual. You must follow the directions of a police officer, fire person, or authorized flag person regardless of signs or signals. Steady orange upraised hand. Pedestrians shall not leave the sidewalk or enter the roadway in the direction of the signal. Pedestrians already crossing when the signal comes on shall quickly proceed across the roadway. The don't walk signal means the same as the upraised hand. Flashing orange upraised hand. The flashing upraised hand indicates that pedestrians may not enter the roadway, however those already in roadway may proceed to the other side. Pedestrians should stay within marked crosswalks and observe due courtesy to others. The flashing don't walk signal means the same as the flashing upraised hand. Flashing orange upraised hand with Countdown timer the flashing upraised hand with countdown timer indicates that pedestrians are permitted to leave the curb if they are able to complete the crossing before the timer reaches zero. The countdown timer indicates to pedestrians the seconds remaining to complete crossing the roadway. Upon reaching zero the flashing upraised hand changes to the steady upraised hand and the countdown timer goes dark. Steady orange don't walk. Pedestrians shall not leave the sidewalk or enter the roadway in the direction of the signal. Pedestrians already crossing when the signal comes on shall quickly proceed across the roadway. The hand outline means the same as the don't walk signal. Flashing orange don't walk. Pedestrians may not enter the roadway but should stay within marked crosswalks and observe due courtesy to others. However, 
those already in roadway may proceed to the other side. Steady clear walk. Pedestrians may enter the roadway when it may be done with safety in the direction of the signal but should stay within marked crosswalks and observe due courtesy to others. The walking pedestrian symbol means the same as the walk signal. Steady white walking person pedestrians may enter the roadway when it may be done with safety in the direction of the signal but should stay within marked crosswalks and observe due courtesy to others. The walk signal means the same as the walking person. Lane control signals. Distinctive signals with X's or down arrows are used above reversible lanes. Such lanes may be marked with double yellow dashed lines on each side. Use such lane only as permitted by the signal. Do not enter the lane if signals are not illuminated. Steady red X. Don't use the lane. Opposing traffic is permitted to use the lane. Steady yellow X. Clear the lane in a safe manner. A. Red X signal is about to appear. Steady green arrow. Travel in lane is permitted. Two-way left turn arrows. Use caution entering the two-way left turn only lane. Opposing traffic also may use the lane for left turns. Yield to oncoming traffic and pedestrians while making the turn. One-way left turn arrow. Use caution entering the left turn only lane. Opposing traffic is not permitted to use the lane for left turns. Yield to oncoming traffic and pedestrians while making the turn. Marking. One pavement markings are used like roadway signs to warn, regulate, and inform traffic. A. Yellow markings, such as center lines, separate traffic flow going in opposite directions. B. White markings, such as lane lines, separate traffic going in the same direction. C. Dashed lines are permissive. D. Solid white lines are restrictive, and solid yellow lines are prohibitive. It is illegal to drive on the shoulder of roadways. Read the traffic markings, know what they mean and obey them. Pavement markings have the same force of law as signs or signals. Two-lane, two-way roadway passing prohibited both directions, crossing center line permitted only as part of left turn maneuver. Restricted lane. Multi-lane, two-way roadways with preferential lanes assigned to buses, carpools, etc. Diamond markings and special signs are required. Divided roadways. Divided roadways, multi-lane with divider. Yellow left edge lines are on all divided or one-way roadways. Undivided. Roadway. Multi-lane, two-way roadway, crossing center line permitted only as part of left turn maneuver. Shared center lane. Multi-lane, two-way roadway, with two-way left turn lane reserved exclusively for left turning vehicles in either direction. Special signs and pavement marking arrows are utilized. It is not permissible to use the center left turn lane as a driving, accelerating, or passing lane. Reversible center. Lane. Multi-lane, two-way roadway, with center lane direction reversible during specified periods. Signs or signals are required. Two-lane, two-way roadway, passing permitted. Two-lane, two-way roadway. Passing prohibited one direction. Two yellow lines separate traffic going in opposite directions. A. Dashed yellow line markings indicate where passing is permitted on two lane, two way roadways. B. Solid yellow center lines indicate where passing is not permitted, although, turning into a driveway across them is allowed. C. A single solid yellow line indicates the left edge of a divided roadway. Three white lines separate traffic going in the same direction on multi-lane or one-way roadways. A. Dashed white lines separate lanes of travel where changing lanes is not restricted and where the lane use is not specified. B. Solid white lines indicate the edges of lanes specified for certain uses where changing lanes is to be discouraged. C. Solid white lines are also used to mark the outside edge of the pavement or to indicate the edge of the shoulder. Drive within a lane and do not move from it until it is safe to do so. Four pavement legends convey important information. An arrow indicates that the lane with that marking is reserved exclusively for making the movement indicated by the arrow. You must make the movement indicated by the arrow, if it is in your lane. 
Five special legends such as Stop Ahead, School, and RXR indicate special conditions to the driver. Although they are not regulatory, they are used only where the condition such as a stop sign, school buildings, or railroad crossing requires extreme caution on the part of the motorist. Pay special heed to these legends and be prepared to stop. 6. Transverse markings such as stop lines, crosswalks, and parking space markings are white lines intended to guide the driver. Stop lines indicate the farthest point into the intersection an automobile may extend to allow the driver a clear view of approaching traffic. Stop lines are not used with crosswalks where the line farthest from the crossroad indicates the limits of the intersection. Stay outside of the limits of an intersection until you may enter it with safety. Likewise, park within marked parking stalls. 7. Crosswalk lines need not be painted at all intersections nor do they need be in place to indicate where pedestrians have the right of way. Pedestrians have the right of way at marked crosswalks or at intersections. Do not drive so as to make a pedestrian yield to you, the motorist should always yield to the pedestrian. Also, do not pass to the right or left of an automobile which is stopped at a crosswalk to allow a pedestrian to cross the street in either direction. 8. If you find you are in the wrong lane to turn when entering an intersection, do not turn or impede so you can turn. Continue on around the block. Be alert for no U-turn signs. Railroad crossings. Railroad cross buck and warning sign. Be prepared to stop for trains. Railroad crossings. Never get trapped on a crossing. When traffic is heavy, wait on the approach to a crossing until you are sure you can clear the crossing. Watch out for the second train. When the last car of a train passes the crossing do not start up until you are sure no train is coming on another track, especially from the other direction. Never drive around gates. If the gates are down, stay in place and do not cross the tracks until the gates are raised. It is against the law to go around crossing gates. Never race a train. Racing a train to the crossing is foolhardy. You may never have another chance if you lose. Never shift gears on the crossing. If your vehicle has a manual transmission, shift down and do not change gears while crossing the tracks. Watch for vehicles that must stop at crossings. Be prepared to stop when you are following buses or trucks which are required to stop at railroad crossings. Do not pass them when prohibited by law. If legal to pass, make sure there are no unsafe conditions and that you have a clear view of the tracks. Always stop when a train is close to a crossing. Be prepared to stop if a train is within 1500 feet of the crossing. You must stop even if the crossing is unmarked. Do not take a chance. Trains cannot stop easily, nor within a short distance. Railroad crossings. If you're stuck on the tracks, get out of your vehicle. If your vehicle is physically on the train tracks at a grade crossing and the lights begin to flash, you may only have 20 seconds to escape before the train makes it to your location. 20 seconds is the minimal amount of time that it takes a train to reach the grade crossing once the warning lights activate. If this happens to you, Remember the word go, as in get out of your vehicle. Once outside, run in a 45 degree angle away from the tracks in the direction that the train is coming, then immediately dial 911. If you are stuck on the tracks, and there are no warning lights, or the warning lights have not activated yet, get out of your vehicle and immediately dial 911 and the ENDS, emergency notification system number located on the railroad crossing posts or the metal control box near the tracks. Provide the location, crossing number, if posted, and the road or highway that intersects the tracks. Be sure to specify that a vehicle is on the tracks. Emergency notification system, ENDS. The typically blue-colored emergency notification system, ENDS, sign is at every highway rail grade crossing and provides the public with a 24-7-365 telephone number to call to report problems or emergencies at these railroad locations. The sign is either located on the black and white cross buck or near the actual crossing. The toll-free ENDS number is answered by railroad dispatchers who are the first line of defense to attempt to stop all train traffic at the crossing during an emergency. 
Directly below the dispatch number on the end sign is a Department of Transportation number that identifies the exact location of the crossing in question. By following the information on the sign, the public can report unsafe conditions such as 1. Malfunctions of warning signals, crossing gates, and other safety devices at the crossings. 2. Disabled cars, trucks, or other vehicles blocking the railroad tracks at the crossings. 3. The presence of trespassers on the tracks or along the right of way at the crossing, and 4. Any other information relating to an unsafe condition at the crossing. Railroad crossings. Every grade crossing has an emergency dispatch number for contacting the railroad to report problems with the crossing, tracks or train travel. The ENDS number is typically located on a blue sign on the railroad cross buck sign or near the grade crossing. The sign also contains a dot number that identifies the grade crossing's physical location so emergency crews or railroad personnel can respond. Railroad Emergency Notification Numbers Alaska Railroad 1-800-478-2334 or 1-907-265-2334. Amtrak 1-800-331-0008. BNSF Railway 1-800-832-5452. CSX 1-800-232-0144. Canadian National 1-800-465-9239. Canadian Pacific 1-800-716-9132 Kansas City Southern 1-800-892-6295 Norfolk Southern 1-800-453-2530 Union Pacific 1-888-877-7267 This information may save your life. Amtrak is a registered service mark of the National Railroad Passenger Corporation. Information compiled from Amtrak. Night driving and lighting. On the basis of miles driven, the fatal crash rate for night driving is greater than for daytime driving. This is due to the inability of the driver to see as far, as soon, and as much. Glare and glare recovery. The glare from the headlights of oncoming vehicles causes the pupil of the eye to contract. After the vehicle has passed it takes an interval of time for the pupil to readjust to the less intense light. This is called glare recovery time. During this recovery period you are virtually driving blind. Glare recovery time is not based on visual acuity and varies from person to person. The problem is generally more acute in older drivers and those in poor physical condition. Safety tips. Be sure headlights are in working order and lenses clean. Check high and low beam on garage wall. Keep windshield clean. Don't look at the hot spot in the headlight pattern of approaching cars. Wear sunglasses in bright sunlight to protect night seeing ability. Do not wear sunglasses at night. Tinted windshields affect night vision. Remember that even moderate drinking may reduce one's vision as well as reaction time. Both prescription medicines and non-prescription medicines may affect driving. Read labels carefully. Carry a flashlight and flares. Use of lighting equipment. Lighting law. One headlights must be turned on from one half hour after sunset to one half hour before sunrise. Two headlights must be turned on in daytime when visibility is reduced to 1,000 feet or less by fog, rain, snow, smoke, or dust. Three change headlights to low beam, dim, 500 feet or more from oncoming vehicle. 4. Change headlights to low beam, dim, 300 feet or more from vehicle going in the same direction. 5. Parking lights denote a parked vehicle. Do not use only parking lights, day or night, when vehicle is in motion. Wrong. Wrong. Right. Right. Safety suggestions for the use of lighting. Equipment. 1. Turn on headlights at dusk and in daytime when visibility is poor to make sure that the other driver sees you. 2. Use slow beam, dim, when driving in rain, fog, snow, or dust. 3. When meeting vehicles at night do not stare at headlights. Use quick glances to a. Check oncoming vehicle for lane position. b. Check your own vehicle's position. c. Check right edge of road. D. Look ahead for objects in your driving path. 
Major roads. Check vehicle. Any kind of mechanical failure is dangerous. High speeds generate heat. Check oil, water level, radiator hoses, and fan belt frequently. Be sure tires are safe for high speed driving. Blowouts are a common factor in crashes. If you have vehicle trouble, be especially cautious at night. There is danger of being hit from the rear. Use all four flashing turn signals simultaneously. Emergencies If vehicle is disabled, move it so that all wheels are off the traveled portion of the road, if possible. Raise hood or tie white cloth or handkerchief on left door handle or radio antenna. Remove vehicle without delay. Quit driving when drowsy. Drowsiness is the first step in falling asleep. Do not stare. Move your eyes from side to side and change focus from near to far. Keep vehicle interior as cool as possible. Take a break out of the vehicle every 100 miles. Speed Speed limits as posted. Speed limitations imposed by traffic, weather, and road conditions are applicable on all highway systems. You are not required to drive at the maximum speed limits. High speed causes tire wear and results in poor gasoline mileage. Vary speed from time to time to prevent monotony and road hypnosis. Driving at the same speed for a long time and distance dulls the senses and makes a driver crash prone. See page 24. Controlled access multi-laned. Changing lanes. Check blind spots. Driver of front car cannot see other two cars in inside mirror. Check mirrors and look over shoulder toward the rear before changing lanes. If traffic conditions permit don't cruise in blind spot of vehicle ahead. Following. Rear end crashes are one of the greatest crashes problems on high speed highways. Use the 4 second rule as outlined on page 23. Do not follow the same vehicle or group of vehicles for a long distance, this results in assuming a spectator role and you cease to consider the car ahead as a source of danger. Don't drive in other driver's blind spot. They cannot see you with their inside mirror if you are near their left or right rear fender. Passing Slow moving vehicles must keep right. Safe passing is dependent upon cooperation between drivers. Do not speed up when being passed. Don't cut in too soon. Quick movements at high speed can be fatal. Be aware of a truck's deaf spot. Partial vacuum often prevents truck drivers from hearing your horn. Changing lanes. 1. Use mirrors. 2. Check blind spots. 3. Signal intentions. 4. Change lanes gradually and carefully. Highways. Entering the controlled access highway freeway. Use the acceleration lane to get up to cruising speed before attempting to merge into the traffic stream. Yield to approaching traffic on the freeway as you are about to enter and stop if necessary, but be cautious of the vehicles following you. Leaving the expressway. Keep moving on the expressway. A stop can result in a serious rear-end crash. Move to the deceleration lane and then slow down. Plan ahead. Watch for exit signs. If you miss an exit don't back up. Go to the next exit. If you take a wrong exit don't stop. Stops are a primary cause of rear-end crashes. Except in the case of emergency, parking is prohibited on the paved portion of the highway, the shoulders, or anywhere within right of way. Make only authorized turns on the highway or freeway. Dimming of headlights is required on divided highways as it is elsewhere. Weather conditions. Rain, snow, sleet, ice, fog, frost, wind, sun. Weather conditions greatly affect visibility and vehicle traction. You can't avoid striking or being struck by something which you can't see. You can't stop or change direction quickly when the road surface is covered with rain, snow, or ice. The first half hour after a rain often makes hard surface roads slippery. The dust and road film is not washed off the surface. Oil, dirt, and rubber dust mixed with water forms a slippery combination. Test the road surface for traction but check rear vision mirror before doing so. Windshield wipers that streak and skip are especially hazardous on a rainy night. A windshield washer is a valuable safety accessory. Safety Tips 
Carry a small bottle of detergent in glove compartment. Rub a small amount on windshield when it begins to rain to cut the oil film. Request service station attendant to refrain from using an oily cloth on windshield. Stay well back from the vehicle ahead to aid in avoiding spatter on windshield and headlights. Clean lights often, especially after a rainy spell. Bald tires do not give you directional control of your car when attempting to stop on a wet surface. Drive on tires with good tread. Carry a full tank of gas in cold weather to prevent moisture condensation in the fuel tank. Animals Animal encounters are a common occurrence on Alaskan roads. Moose and deer are prevalent in most areas of the state. Regionally caribou are common in the Kenai Peninsula, sheep and bear in south-central, and mountain goats in southeast. Collisions with big game animals can be dangerous and costly. Drivers should take precautions to help prevent such crashes. Use caution when driving at dawn or dusk and scan roads and roadsides ahead. Keep vehicle headlights and windshields clean. Moose can be difficult to see and most vehicle moose accidents occur at dawn and dusk when light is low and moose are most active. Reduce your speed at night and use high beams when possible. Slow down when approaching deer or moose standing near the roadside, as they may suddenly bolt into the road. Deer and moose often travel in pairs or groups, so if an animal is spotted crossing the road, slow down and be alert for others that may follow. Briefly use flashers or a headlight signal to warn approaching drivers when deer or moose are spotted in or near the highway. Drivers need to be careful of other vehicles pulling over suddenly to view wildlife. Be especially alert and use caution when traveling through frequent deer or moose crossing areas, which are usually marked with leaping stag or moose signs. Do not rely on devices, such as deer whistles, extra lights or reflectors, to deter animals. Research has shown that your best defense is your own responsible behavior. Motorcyclists should be especially alert for animals as motorcycle collisions with animals have a higher fatality rate. If an animal does run in front of your vehicle, brake firmly but do not swerve. Swerving can cause a vehicle-vehicle collision or cause the vehicle to strike a pedestrian or potentially deadly fixed object, such as a tree or utility pole. If a collision with a big game animal occurs, Contact your local police department or the Alaska State Troopers. Big game animals killed or injured in a vehicular collision are the property of the state. If, following a vehicle collision, you kill or injure a big game animal, you must notify a state trooper or a fish and wildlife officer as soon as possible. Skids Prevention 1. Be alert to conditions that may cause skidding. 2. Avoid abrupt speed and direction changes. 3. Be extra alert for slippery conditions during thawing and freezing weather. 4. Shaded areas, protected areas, and bridges become slippery before the balance of the road surface and stay so longer. 5. Do not overcorrect in a skidding situation. This results only in changing the direction of the skid. 6. Practice stopping and skid recovery in a safe area, on private property at slow speed before attempting to drive on ice or packed snow in traffic. Don't use this as an excuse to drive recklessly. 7. When suspicious of ice, test road surface cautiously. Check mirror before making test stop. 8. Slow down well in advance of stopping point when driving on ice or packed snow. 9. Do not lock wheels when using brakes. If wheels don't roll you don't have control. Pump brakes lightly to slow down or stop on a slippery surface. If your vehicle is equipped with ABS, Check your vehicle manual for instructions on use. Recovery from skid. 1. Control yourself don't panic. 2. Turn the front wheels in the direction of the skid. 3. Don't brake suddenly. 4. Don't oversteer or overcorrect. 5. As control is being regained, safely slow the vehicle by very gently depressing and releasing the brake pedal. Note. Front-wheel drive or four-wheel drive vehicles require easy acceleration to pull out of a skid. Parking 1. When parking adjacent to roadway outside of city limits, all four wheels must be off the pavement, if possible. Parking lights or low-beam headlights are to be left on at night, unless 8 feet from edge of pavement. 2. No parking zones in cities and towns are usually marked by a sign or yellow or red painted curb. 
3. Double parking is prohibited by law. 4. It is against the law to leave the engine running in a parked unattended vehicle. 5. Remove ignition keys from parked, unattended vehicle. 6. When parking on a downhill, turn front wheels toward curb. On an uphill, turn front wheels away from curb. 7. In parallel parking the wheels must be within 12 inches of near curb. 8. Driver must look, signal, and yield the right of way when moving out of a parking place. 9. It is illegal to park closer than the indicated distances from the following. A. 15 feet from fire hydrant. B. 30 feet from stop sign. C. 20 feet from entrance to fire station. D. 20 feet from crosswalk or intersection. E. 50, fort from railroad crossing. F. F. 500 feet from fire apparatus which has stopped in answer to fire alarm. Parallel parking. Step 1. Signal, stop even with front vehicle about a foot and a half out from it. Rear bumpers even. Step 2. Downhill, turn wheels to curb. Uphill with curb, turn wheels from curb. Uphill without curb, turn wheels to right. Step 3. When front bumper is even with other vehicle's back bumper, turn wheels sharply and rapidly to left as far as possible. Back slowly to vehicle behind without touching it. Step 4. Turn steering wheel sharply to the right and slowly pull forward toward the curb. Center vehicle in space. Look back before driving from curb. Look signal yield. Leaving parking space. The chief responsibility for avoiding a collision lies with the driver who is leaving a parking space. Exercise extraordinary caution when backing up in residential areas. Children often play behind and between parked vehicles. Downhill, turn wheels to curb. Uphill with curb, turn wheels from curb. Uphill without curb, turn wheels to right. Emergency vehicles. Emergency vehicles. One vehicles operated by police and fire departments as well as ambulances are equipped with sirens and front red lights. 2. It is against the law for an unauthorized vehicle to have a red light visible from the front. Upon the immediate approach of an authorized emergency vehicle displaying a flashing red light and slash or with siren in operation or a vehicle displaying a flashing blue light, all traffic meeting and being overtaken must yield the right of way and pull over to the curb or side of the street or highway, clear of intersections, and must stop. Remain in that position until the emergency vehicle or the vehicle displaying the flashing blue light has passed or you are directed to move by a peace officer or fire person. Failure to vacate the lane or unsafe driving around emergency vehicles can lead to a crash, personal injury, and slash or citations. Approaching emergency vehicles. A driver of a motor vehicle has to be cautious of the surrounding area. If there are emergency vehicles on the road, ambulance, fire truck, law enforcement, or tow truck, responding to an emergency, a driver must. 1. Yield the right of way to emergency vehicle approaching from any direction by pulling to the right and stopping. 13. AAC 02.140. 2. If not possible, slow down to a reasonable speed and drive safely around the scene. Encountering stationary emergency vehicles. When encountering stationary emergency vehicles or tow trucks with overhead flashing lights on a four lane road, Drivers must pull to the lane opposite the emergency vehicle slash tow truck if it is safe to do so. If it is not safe to do so, or you are on a two-lane road, you must slow to a reasonable and prudent speed when passing. As 28.35.185 Following emergency vehicle A vehicle other than one on official business may not follow an emergency vehicle traveling in response to an emergency closer than 500 feet. Do not park a vehicle within 500 feet where fire apparatus has stopped in response to a fire alarm. Do not cross fire hoses. A vehicle may not be driven over an unprotected hose of a fire department without the consent of a department official. Driving your vehicle over any fire hose is not permissible under Alaska law. Damage or injury could occur to you, your vehicle or endanger the lives of rescue workers. 13. AAC 02.520, C, $100 fine, 2 PTS. Special Requirements Several cities have ordinances requiring all motorists, 
within the sound of a fire signal, to pull over and stop until the signal stops. Stop by law enforcement. Drivers are required to stop as soon as is practical and in a reasonably safe manner when signaled to do so by police. As 28.35.182 If you are contacted by an officer and you have a deadly weapon concealed on your person, you must notify the officer immediately. As 11.11.61.220, A, 1, A, drivers must have their driver's license in their possession as 28.15.131. Proof of insurance as 28.22.019, proof of current registration as 28.10.461 and show it to the officer upon request. Proof of insurance may be displayed on a mobile device. Best practices. If you are being pulled over, signal immediately to show the officer your intentions and pull over to the right as soon as it is safe to do so, even if you are in the left lane of a four-lane roadway. Try not to stop on a curve just after the crest of a hill, next to a guardrail, or other location that would make the stop unsafe for you and the officer. The driver and all passengers should stay in the vehicle. In times of darkness, turn on interior lights of the vehicle. Keep your hands visible, such as on the steering wheel. Prior to retrieving any documents from a wallet, purse, center console, or glove compartment, wait for the officer to ask. When the stop is complete, the officer will remain in place until you signal and safely re-enter the lane of traffic unless they instruct you otherwise. Emergencies Tire blows out Don't apply brakes Concentrate on steering Slow down gradually Brake softly Pull completely off pavement Fire Apply mud, dirt, dust, snow Check ditch for water Use hubcap to carry water or wet wearing apparel. Loosen dirt with tire tool. Flooded engine. Press gas pedal to floor. Do not pump gas pedal. Run starter steadily. Let pedal up when engine starts. Wet brakes. Test brakes lightly after driving through deep water. Brakes may pull to one side or may not hold at all. Dry brakes by driving slowly in low gear and apply brakes lightly. Accelerator jammed. Slap pedal hard with foot. Use brakes. Shift to neutral. Concentrate on steering. Disabled vehicle. Park all four wheels off the traveled portion of the highway if possible. Turn on parking lights or four-way flashers at night. If available, set out flares at night. Use starter and low gear to pull standard shift car to shoulder. If you cannot move car off roadway raise hood or tie handkerchief on door handle to warn other motorists. Brakes fail. Use parking brake. Shift to lower gear. Rub tires on curb. Vehicle approaching in your lane. Sound your horn. Brake sharply. Steer for a shoulder or ditch. Safety tips. Right wheel off pavement. Stop feeding gas. Maintain firm grip on steering wheel. Brake lightly and intermittently. Maintain car control. Do not attempt to return to pavement until there are no cars in your immediate vicinity. Turn back onto pavement sharply at slow speed. Coasting prohibited. A driver of a motor vehicle when traveling on a downgrade may not coast with the gears of the vehicle in neutral, or with the clutch disengaged. Turning around on the highway. It is contrary to law to turn around near a curve or hill when the driver cannot see 500 feet or more in each direction. Turning around in the city. The safest method is drive around the block. Be alert for signs prohibiting U-turns. Backing. Always look before you back. Avoid opening the door and sticking your head out to see this is dangerous. When backing you must yield the right of way to a vehicle approaching on the highway or intersecting highway. Unless directed by police, fire, or construction flag personnel, it is illegal to back on a controlled access highway, or on its entrance or exit ramps. Required equipment. Safety slash seat belts. Two lap and shoulder belts installed for use in front seat. Headlights. At least two, one on each side on the front. Tail lights. 
At least two red lights on the rear. Both must be working. Brake lights. Two which shall only work when foot brake is applied. Both must be working. License plate light. A white light illuminating the rear license plate so that numbers are visible for at least 50 feet, if equipped. Turn signals. All vehicles must be equipped with directional signals and they must be in working order. Foot brake. Adequate to stop passenger vehicle within a distance of 25 feet at a speed of 20 miles per hour. Emergency or parking brake and lights. Adequate to hold vehicle stationary on any grade. Two lights, front and rear. License plates. Must have two license plates with month and year tabs displayed on rear plate. Windshield and windows. Windshield required. Windshield, side wings, side and rear windows must be safety glass and afford driver clear vision. Tinting may not exceed the percent allowed by law. Windshield wipers and defroster. Required devices for cleaning rain, snow, etc., from windshield. Safety glass. All original and replacement glass must be safety glass. Horn. Capable of emitting sound audible under normal conditions from a distance of not less than 200 feet. No device shall emit an unusually loud sound or whistle. Mirror. Left side and inside or right mirror required. Vehicles with obstructed driver's view through rear window and buses are required to have mirrors on left and right side. Mirrors must be adjusted to afford driver a view to the rear of the vehicle. Anti-spray devices. The vehicle design or accessories must effectively reduce wheel spray to the rear. Your car must have the following equipment. Working and in proper adjustment. Mirror. All windows safety glass. Windshield wipers and depositor. Headlights and parking lights. Four-way flashers. Brakes. Parking brake. Muffler and tight exhaust system. Good tires. Turn signal lights, front and rear. License plate light. Four-way flashers. Brake lights and tail lights. Safety belts. Horn. Asterisk Alaska registered vehicles must have two license plates. Unnecessary use of horn. Audible signal devices may not be used unless necessary to assure safe operation. Mufflers, prevention of noise. Every motor vehicle shall be equipped with a muffler in good working order and in constant operation to prevent excessive or unusual noise. No person may use a muffler cutout, bypass, or similar device upon a motor vehicle on a highway. Suggested safety equipment. Jumper cables. Three flares for nighttime emergencies. Flashlight. Windshield washer. Booted anti-ice wiper blades. Snow tires or tire chains. Frost scraper and snow brush. Tow chain. Emergency kit, i.e. first aid kit, extra clothing slash boots, blanket, sand, shovel, food. Carbon monoxide. A colorless, odorless, poisonous gas from vehicle exhaust can make you a dangerous driver and even cost you your life. It paralyzes before it kills. Symptoms headache, dizziness, nausea, and vomiting. Prevention tight exhaust system, adequate fresh air circulation. Safety tips. Never run a vehicle in a closed garage. Be sure that the vehicle's exhaust system is in good condition. Keep the operating efficiency of engine high. Never park and run heater or air conditioner with the windows closed. Always have plenty of fresh air in vehicle. Move victim of carbon monoxide to fresh air and administer artificial respiration. Sharing the road. You must learn to safely share the road with large vehicles, motorcycles, pedestrians and bicyclists. You should know how to safely manage the problems they can present. Pedestrians. Approximately 20% of all traffic fatalities are pedestrians. It's a good idea to reduce speed and create a larger space cushion when you see pedestrians on or near the street. Study the following rules and put them into practice when you drive and when you walk. Your responsibility as a driver. Slow down, yield, and be prepared to stop when approaching pedestrians who are walking on or crossing the roadway. 
Do not drive through a pedestrian safety zone when occupied. Do not pass a vehicle that has stopped to allow a pedestrian to cross the street. Be especially watchful for children near schools and residential areas. Check mirror before exiting your vehicle. Older people are often handicapped by poor vision, slow reaction time, and inability to move fast. Children are quick and see well, but they are not familiar with traffic patterns and often underestimate the destructive force of a motor vehicle. Pedestrians using guide dogs or white canes with or without a red tip must be given the right of way at all times, regardless of the traffic signal or traffic situation. These pedestrians are partially or totally blind. Be especially careful when turning corners or backing up when these pedestrians are in your vicinity. Here are some suggestions for helping pedestrians who are blind. A blind pedestrian uses the sound of your engine as a guide, so drive up to the crosswalk to allow the person to hear you. Important. Don't stop in the middle of a crosswalk. This forces the blind pedestrian to go around your car and into traffic outside of the crosswalk. Don't honk your horn at a blind person. The blind person has no idea who you are honking at and may be startled by the noise. Your responsibility as a pedestrian. Cross only at crosswalks. Obey all traffic laws and signals. Never cross a street on a stale green traffic light that has about run out of time or when a steady or flashing don't walk or upraised hand appears. Look for turning vehicles before crossing the street. Walk on the left side of the highway facing oncoming traffic. Do not solicit a ride from anyone on or along a highway. Wear light-colored clothing when walking on or alongside the roadway at night. Do not drink an intoxicant or be intoxicated on or along a highway. Bicycles Motorist, with the increasing use of bicycles, there is a greater need to exercise care while driving when bicyclists are present to ensure their safety. Bicyclists have the right to share the road and travel in the same direction as motor vehicles. They are often hard to see in traffic and have no protection from a traffic crash. Check your blind spots before you make a turn, parallel park, open a door or leave a curb. Do not depend on only your mirrors turn your head to look for bicyclists that may be next to them or approaching. As a driver, you must be alert and courteous to all bicyclists. The rules of the road and right of way apply to and protect these and other highway users. You must yield the right of way to them just as you would to another vehicle. Remember a bicycle is a vehicle. Bicyclists share a complex traffic environment with other larger forms of transportation. Youngsters under age 9 lack the physical and mental development to interact safely in that environment so be careful when driving near children riding bikes. Bicyclists Bicyclists are required to obey traffic signs, signals, and all other traffic laws. Always be alert for other traffic. Alaska Law is 28.15.231, B, states that no points are assessed for traffic violations when using a bicycle. Bicycles must follow the rules of the road per 13 AAC 02.385. Safety tips We can make bicycling safer for all by observing the following safety tips. Always wear a helmet. Obey all traffic controls. Ride your bicycle near the right-hand edge of the road. Never carry another person on your bicycle. Always use hand signals when turning or stopping. Left turn, right turn, slow stop, alternate right turn. Signal turns, lane changes and stops through the use of the hand signals shown. A bicyclist can signal a right turn when they extend the right arm straight out to the right. Left turn, left arm fully extended to left. Stop, left arm extended and bent down at elbow, right turn, right arm fully extended to right or left arm extended and bent up at elbow. Look out for cars at cross street, driveways, and parking places. Be careful when checking traffic and don't swerve when looking over your shoulder. Give pedestrians the right of way. Keep your bicycle in good condition. Always ride carefully. Stay out of the blind spots of vehicles. Turning cars, trucks, and buses cannot see a bicycle in their blind spot. Do not pass when vehicles are turning, especially on the side to which they are making the turn. Thank motorists who have been considerate with a wave or a nod. 
It brightens everyone's day and creates goodwill towards cyclists and motorists alike. Make eye contact drivers before crossing in front of them, even if you have the right of way. If you're going to wear headphones while biking be sure to always keep one earbud out. There are numerous safety concerns regarding headphones while biking including your own safety. You need to be able to hear shouting pedestrians, other bikers, barking dogs and slash or approaching traffic horns, car doors opening, etc. The more aware a biker can be the safer they will be. Motorcycles Many drivers are having trouble adjusting to the increasing number of motorcycles appearing on our nation's streets and highways. Motorcycles number less than 4% of the motor vehicle population in the U.S., yet they are involved in 11% of all motor vehicle deaths. In most motorcycle crashes, drivers of other vehicles are at fault. Motorcyclists have the same rights and responsibilities on public roadways as other drivers. However, special conditions and situations often cause greater problems for motorcyclists. Drivers should be aware of these problems, so they can help share the road safely with motorcyclists. Motorcycles are not easily identified in traffic. Even when drivers see them, many say it's difficult to judge how far away motorcyclists are or how fast they are traveling. Being alert to this perceptual problem and consciously looking for motorcyclists will help avoid collisions. Here are a few of the situations that require special attention by motorcyclists and you. Drivers turning left in front of oncoming motorcyclists cause a large percentage of car slash cycle crashes. Drivers often fail to pick the cyclist out of the traffic scene, or inaccurately judge the speed of the oncoming motorcycle. Look once, then again. Make sure you see the motorcycle and know its speed before you make a left turn. Turn signals do not turn off automatically on most motorcycles. Before you make a turn in front of a motorcyclist, be sure the rider is turning and not continuing straight into your path with a forgotten turn signal still blinking. The same 4 second following distance should be given to motorcyclists as given other vehicles. Following too closely may cause the rider's attention to be distracted from the road and traffic ahead. Motorcycles need a full lane width like other vehicles. A skilled motorcyclist will constantly change positions within a lane to increase their ability to see and be seen, and to avoid objects on the road. Never move into the same lane with a motorcycle, even if the lane is wide and the cyclist is riding to one side. It is not only illegal, it is extremely hazardous. Bad weather and slippery surfaces cause greater problems for motorcycles than for cars. Allow more following distance for motorcyclists when the road surface is wet and slippery. These conditions create stability problems, and skilled motorcyclists will slow down. Also be alert to the problem of glare that rain and wet surfaces create, especially at night. Strong crosswinds can move a motorcycle out of its lane of travel. Areas where this can happen are wide open, long stretches of highways and bridges. Large, fast-moving trucks sometimes create wind blasts, which, under certain conditions, can move the motorcyclist out of their path of travel. Being alert to these conditions prepares you for a motorcyclist's possible quick change in speed or direction. Some other conditions that create special problems for motorcyclists are Road hazards, such as gravel, debris, pavement seams, rain grooves, small animals and even manhole covers, may cause the motorcyclist to change speed or direction. Railroad grade crossings usually cause the motorcyclist to slow down and rise off the seat to help cushion the shock of a rough crossing. The rider also may change direction so the tracks can be crossed head on. Metal or graded bridges cause a motorcycle to wobble much more than a car. An experienced cyclist slows down and moves to the center of the lane to allow room for handling the uneven surface. An inexperienced cyclist may become startled and try to quickly change direction. Be prepared for either reaction. Being aware of these situations and following these suggestions can help you share the road safely with motorcyclists. Please see our motorcycle manual for additional information. Overtaking a school bus with red lights activated drivers approaching a school bus from the rear may not pass the school bus when red signal lights are flashing and shall bring their vehicles to a complete stop before reaching the school bus when it is stopped. The vehicles shall remain stopped until the stop sign is retracted, 
the flashing red lights are discontinued and the school bus resumes motion, or until signaled by the driver to proceed. Meeting a school bus Drivers approaching a school bus on which the yellow slash amber warning signal lights are flashing shall reduce the speed of their vehicles and shall bring the vehicle to a complete stop when school bus stops, red lights flash, and stop sign is extended. The vehicles shall remain stopped until stop sign is retracted and the red lights are discontinued after which they may proceed with due caution. Driver upon a highway with separated roadways providing two or more lanes in each direction need not stop when approaching a school bus which is headed in the opposite direction even though the bus is stopped and the stop arm is extended and the red flashing lights are activated. Both vehicles must stop. Large trucks and buses. You are at a serious disadvantage if involved in a crash with a larger vehicle. In large truck crashes, the occupants of a car, usually the driver, sustain 78% of fatalities. To keep you and your family safe when driving around large trucks and buses, you should be extra cautious. Sharing the road with larger vehicles can be dangerous if you are not aware of their limitations. Large trucks and buses do not operate like cars. They are so large that accelerating, slowing down, or stopping takes more time and much more space than any other vehicle on the road. They have large blind spots, make wide turns, and are not as maneuverable. If they come upon an unexpected traffic situation, there may not be enough room for them to avoid a crash. Here are a few tips to help you drive safer to prevent a crash. Stay out of the no zone. Watch out for the no-zone around large trucks and buses. The no-zone represents the blind spots around the front, back, and sides of trucks and buses where crashes are more likely to occur because truck drivers have limited visibility. Because of a truck's size, truck drivers must react faster than car drivers in emergency situations. If faced with a potential front-end crash, the truck driver may turn into your lane not knowing you are there. So be safe and don't hang out in the no zone. Remember, if you can't see the truck or bus driver in their side mirrors, they can't see you. Don't cut in front of trucks. If you cut in front of another vehicle, you may create an emergency braking situation for the vehicles around you, especially in heavy traffic. Trucks and buses take much longer to stop in comparison to cars. A car traveling at 55 miles per hour can stop in about 130 to 140 feet, however a truck needs 400 feet to stop. Truck drivers leave extra room behind the vehicles they follow. If you move into that space and have to brake suddenly, you cut the truck's available stopping distance in half placing you and your passengers in danger. When a car is hit from behind by a truck the results are too often deadly. Trucks are not equipped with the same type of energy-absorbing bumpers as cars. More than 60% of fatal car-slash-truck crashes involve impacts with the front of the truck. Anticipate the flow of traffic before pulling in front of trucks. When passing, look for the whole front of the truck in your rearview mirror before pulling in front of the truck, and then don't slow down. Avoid tailgating. Large trucks are almost as wide as your lane of travel. Driving too close behind a truck prevents you from seeing and reacting to changing traffic conditions. You won't notice a slowdown on the highway, debris in the road, or a crash until it is a braking emergency. If there is a problem ahead, your first hint will be the truck's brake lights. If you happen to be distracted or fatigued, you may not be able to react in time. If you hit the rear of a truck you'll quickly learn that trucks are unforgiving. Trucks do not have impact-absorbing bumpers and their metal bumpers may not align with yours. So be smart and give yourself plenty of room, more than you would for a passenger vehicle. Trucks make wide right turns. Be careful of trucks making wide right turns. If you get in between the truck and the curb, you'll be caught in a squeeze and can suffer a serious collision. Truck drivers sometimes need to swing wide to the left so that they can safely negotiate a right turn especially in urban areas. They can't see cars directly behind or beside them. Cutting in between the truck and the curb increases the possibility of a crash. So pay attention to truck signals, and give them lots of room to maneuver. Flooding Flooding can occur when streams and rivers flow over their banks, when dams or levees break, 
when there is runoff from deep snow or any time there is heavy rainfall. Floodwaters can be found on roads, bridges, and low areas. Flash floods can come rapidly and unexpectedly. They can occur within a few minutes or hours of excessive rainfall. Do not drive through flooded areas. If you see a flooded roadway ahead, turn around and find another route to get to your destination. Be cautious, especially at night, when the visibility is limited. Remember, six inches of water will reach the bottom of most passenger cars, causing loss of control or possible stalling. Two feet of moving water can carry away most vehicles including sport utility vehicles and pickup trucks. Even if the water appears shallow enough to cross, do not attempt to cross a flooded road. Water can hide DIPs, or worse, floodwaters can damage roadways by washing away the underlying road surface. If there is no other route, proceed to higher ground and wait for the waters to subside. Check your driving habits. Smart driving to protect you, your wallet, and the planet asterisk. Safe driving does more than protect you, it saves you money and reduces air pollution. Operating a car involves many expenses, including gas, maintenance, and tires. Drivers and car owners can take a number of steps to minimize these expenses at no additional cost. Driving habits to adopt. 1. Slow down. Fuel consumption increases about 5% for every 5 miles per hour driven above 60 miles per hour. If you traveled a 20-mile highway commute at 60 miles per hour instead of 70 miles per hour, you would save approximately 1.3 gallons of gas each 5-day work week. To ease up on the pedals. Rapid starts and hard stops can increase fuel usage by 40% but reduce travel time by only 4%. The Environmental Protection Agency predicts that gentle acceleration and braking can save more than $1 per gallon. To avoid unnecessary stress on the acceleration and gas pedals. A. Accelerate gradually and avoid jackrabbit starts. B. Anticipate your stops, when approaching a red light, let your foot off the gas pedal as early as possible. C. Maintain a constant speed and coast when you can. D. Make sure you have an easy pass to save time and fuel. 3. Drive cool. In the summer, avoid driving during the hottest parts of the day. Cooler, denser air can boost power and mileage. 4. Stay cool. Use your car's air conditioner when driving more than 40 miles per hour. Today's air conditioners create less drag on the engine than driving with the windows open. 5. But drive to warm up. Even on the coldest days, it only takes 30 seconds to get your vehicle ready to drive. Today's engines are designed to run most efficiently when warmed up, so warm up the vehicle by driving it. 6. Keep cruising. Get a 7% average fuel savings by using cruise control while driving on flat highways. Using cruise control for 10,000 miles could save more than 60 gallons of fuel. 7. Follow the light. When your vehicle's on board diagnostics, OBD, light turns on, it is possible that fuel economy is decreasing, and emissions are increasing. If the OBD light comes on, talk with your auto dealer for more information. 8. Drive safely. Keep enough distance between you and other vehicles. Doing so not only protects you, it also prevents wear and tear on your vehicle. You should know. A. Two second rule, pick an object in front of you like a signpost or tree. When the vehicle in front of you reaches that object, count out 1 1000, 2 1000. If you reach the object before you count 2, you are too close. Slow down until you've put enough distance between you and the other vehicle. Alaska Regulation 13 AAC 02.090 B. React and Step it takes about three quarters of a second to react to a situation and step on the brake pedal. At 50 miles per hour, your vehicle will go another 55 feet in the three quarters of a second it takes to react. Once you hit the brakes, you may go another 160 feet or more before you stop. C. Be alert, notice your surroundings, road conditions, and car features when driving. Make sure that you. I do not let your foot rest on the brake pedal also called riding your brakes. 
2. Never pump the brakes if your vehicle has anti-lock brakes. As of 2010, 89% of new cars and 99% of new light trucks have anti-lock brakes. 3. Always slow down near a curve or an area where you cannot see clearly ahead. 4. Give yourself more distance from other vehicles when it is raining or snowing. When roads are wet or icy, it requires a longer distance for your vehicle to come to a complete stop. 9. Utilize your car. If your vehicle has an echo setting, use it. It will smooth out your gas pedal inputs, optimize transmission shift points, and decrease the impact of air conditioners on the engine. 10. Turn it off. Idling wastes fuel and may be prohibited. If you need to idle, shift to neutral so the engine is not working against your brake and consuming more fuel. As a rule of thumb, thumb off your car for stops anticipated to be longer than 30 to 60 seconds. 11. Drive less. There are multiple ways to reduce costs and save money by driving less. A. Take public transportation, bicycle, or walk, or carpool. These modes of transportation lower operating costs for your vehicle. b. Combine errands to save time and gas. When you need to make multiple stops, go to your farthest destination first to warm up your engine more quickly for better fuel economy. If possible, park in a central place and walk to each destination. 12. Stay on your couch. Shop online and use online services for banking, paying bills, and other tasks that do not require leaving your home. 13. Educate yourself. There are many resources available to get and stay educated about the best safe driving practices. Maintenance practices to follow. 1. Click the cap. Loose, damaged, or missing fuel tank caps cause 147 million gallons of fuel to evaporate each year. Make sure the cap is tight and you can save about $120 per year. 2. Check the pressure. In 2005, 1.2 billion gallons of fuel were wasted by driving on underinflated tires. Proper tire pressure is safer, extends tire life, and can provide up to 3% benefit per tank of fuel. Did you know? Tires must have at least 2 30 seconds inches of tread depth. The distance between the edge of a penny and the top of Lincoln's head is about 2 30 seconds of an inch. If you slide a penny into a tread groove and can see the top of Lincoln's head, your tires are worn out. 3. Twist and turn. Rotate your tires. Proper rotation can add as much as 10,000 miles to the life of a set of tires. 4. Travel light. Remove unneeded items from the trunk and avoid using the roof rack. Added weight and air resistance will cause more fuel to burn. 5. Slim down. Wind resistance can reduce mileage, so remove luggage racks, rooftop carriers, and ski racks when not being used. 6. Oil up. Make sure you use the type of motor oil recommended in your vehicle's owner's manual. You can improve your fuel economy 1-2% to by using the manufacturer's recommended grade of motor oil. Remember to change the oil regularly because degraded motor oil will degrade fuel economy. 7. Tune-up A tune-up can improve gas mileage by an average of 4%. Visit your local dealership or auto shop on a regular schedule. 8. Keep it clean Keep the air filter clean to the point where light can be seen through it. 9. Clogged filters reduce mileage by 10%. Stay informed the actions outlined in this plan can go a long way to producing meaningful savings for you, but it is important to remain informed. Keep records of your driving history to compare costs over time and make better decisions when purchasing new cars. There are a number of smartphone applications that make it easy to track your driving history and calculate fuel efficiency and cost savings. Check your smartphone's app store to see which app is the best fit for you. As you shop for vehicles that are model year 2013 and later, be sure to review the fuel economy and environmental labels designed by the Environmental Protection Agency and the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. These labels are designed to give you, the buyer, information about how each car ranks in areas like fuel economy, fuel cost savings, and impact on the environment. Additionally, by scanning the QR code with your smartphone, 
you are able to access online information about how various models compare on fuel economy and other environmental and energy factors. Additional resources Visit the EcoDriver S manual for more information on how to drive smart and green. Check your phone S app store to find an Echo Driving app that works for you. To access the links in this document, visit the electronic version at www.livewithlessimpact.com. Asterisk prepared by the Emmett Environmental Law and Policy Clinic, Harvard Law School. This document includes information from the Massachusetts Registry of Motor Vehicles Driving Manual and AAA publications. Cost savings may vary based on the price of gasoline. Maintenance safety tips. Automobile accidents are the number one killer of teens in America. 2,614 teen drivers involved in fatal crashes in 2013. One million teen drivers involved in police reported crashes in 2013. 12% of crashes among inexperienced drivers are tire related. At least once a month. 1. Check your tire tread. Hold a penny with Abraham Lincoln's body between your thumb and forefinger. Place Lincoln's head first into the deepest looking groove. Can you see all his head? If yes, your tires are too worn, don't drive on them and get them replaced. 2. Check your tire pressure. Buy a tire pressure gauge if you don't have one already. Open your car door and on the inside jam you should see a sticker, take a picture on your smartphone of the number that says PSL, the measurement for tire pressure. Use the pressure gauge to check your tires, make sure you check when they are cold. Compare the number on the gauge to the number you wrote down. If above, let air out. 3. Check your brake lights. Turn on your car. Have a friend or parent stand behind the car. Step on the brake pedal. Does your friend see both lights? If not, you should replace the bulb or fuse. If you don't know how, get a professional to do it. 4. Check your windshield wipers. Windshield wiper blades need to be replaced periodically to ensure optimum visibility. Replace them at least yearly if you live in a sunny slash hot or cold region and twice a year if you live in a dusty or dry region. Clean wiper blades periodically with rag or alcohol wipe to maintain their performance. 5. Check your fluids. A. Oil. Open the hood of your car. Find the oil dipstick, remove it and wipe it down with a rag or paper towel. Put back the dipstick, make sure you push it in as far as it will go. Pull out the dipstick again. If the film of oil does not reach the markings, add more oil. Check your driver's manual to see how often you should replace your oil. B. Coolant. Open the hood of your car. Find the coolant tank this is usually next to the radiator. If the coolant doesn't reach the minimum fill line, fill it with a coolant slash water solution, the ratio for this will be in your car's driver manual. Warning. Never open the radiator cap on a hot car. Wait until the car has cooled down first. Asterisk statistics from NHTSA, information provided by Michelin North America Inc. Chttp colon slash slash beyond the drivingtest.com for more information. Keep our state safe and litter free. Up to 45% of Alaska's litter comes from uncovered or unsecured truck loads. Roadside litter is not only unsightly but can be dangerous to motorists. It is illegal to travel Alaska's roads with an unsecured load. The penalty for littering in Alaska is a fine up to $1,000, a maximum of 90 days imprisonment, and a possible court-imposed penalty of gathering litter in a specified area for a specified time. For information on litter reduction and recycling, write. Department of Environmental Conservation. PO Box 111800, Juneau, Alaska, 99811-1800. Motor Vehicle Contacts. DMV services are available at the following locations. Offices listed under DMV field locations are State of Alaska DMV offices. DMV services are preformed by business partners as well. These businesses provide title, registration, and driver's license and ID services for an additional fee. Please visit our web to see a full listing of these partners.
DMV field locations call 269-5551 or 1-855-269-5551. City. Location. Anchorage, 1300 West Benson Boulevard. Eagle River, 11723 Old Glen Highway No. 113. Bethel, 300 State Highway. City Hall. Delta Junction, Mile 1420 Alaska Highway. Fairbanks, 1979 Pegger Road. Haynes, 259 Main ST. Gateway Building. Homer, 3798 Lake ST. Juno, 2760 Sherwood Lane No. B. Ketchikan, 415 Main Street No. 101. Kodiak, 2921 B. Mill Bay R.D. No. B. Kotzebue, 240 Fifth Avenue Second Floor. Palmer, 515 East Dahlia, Suite 230. Sitka, 901 Halibut Point Road Suite A. Saldotna, 43335 Kalifornski Beach Road No. 9. Talk, Mile 1314 Alaska Highway. Valdez, 217 Mills Avenue. State Building. Offices listed under commission agent locations are offices operated by local governments or private companies who contract with the state to provide services. Location. Anderson, 260 West 1st, City Hall. Barrow, 2022, Aovac ST. City Hall. Cordova, 602 Railroad Avenue. Craig, 506 3rd Avenue. Dillingham, Alaska, and DST. Glen Allen, Mile 187.5 Glen Highway, Glen Allen DMV, North Side of Highway, East of Wells Fargo Bank. King Salmon, Old Air Police Building. Kotzebue, 240 4th Avenue 2nd Floor. Petersburg, 15 North 12th Street Suite 103, Petersburg Vehicle Title and Registration. Seward, 5th and Adams, City Hall. Skagway, 79 State ST. Talkeetna, Mile 0.3 Talkeetna Spur RD, Susitna Valley DMV. Unalaska, 26 Public Safety Way. Wrangell, 431 Zimovia Highway. Yakutat, 609 Forest Highway No. 10. Mailing Addresses and Services. Anchorage Headquarters 1300 West Benson Boulevard Anchorage, Alaska 99503. Website, alaska.gov slash DMV. Register your vehicle. Renew your driver's license. Get a duplicate driver's license or ID. Make a same-day appointment. Send us an email request. Sign up for road test. Find a business partner. Find a driving school. Driver manuals and PRACTIS EXAM. www.alaska.gov slash DMV. Index. Accidents, see crash. Address change. 8. Addresses for motor vehicle offices. 0.84 to 85. Administrative hearing. 16. Administrative revocation. 15. Alcohol and driving. 14 to 19. Animals, struck by vehicle. 60. Bicycles. 70 to 72. Backing. 25, 67. Breaking distance. 26. Change of address. 8. Change of name. 8. Changing lanes. 57. Child restraints, safety belts. 20 to 22. Classes of driver licenses and permits. 1. Certified driving record. 8. Control of vehicle at intersections. 32 to 34. Control of vehicle. 24. Crash reporting and what to do at the scene. 10. Distracted driving. 23. Driver license requirements. 4. 
Driving Examination 5 to 7 Driving Records 8. Drugs and Driving 14 to 19 Duplicate License 8. Emergencies 56, 66 Emergency Vehicles 64 to 65 Equipment Required for Safety 68 Equipment Requirement 68 to 69 Examinations, Written, Vision, Driving 5 to 7 Financial Responsibility 9 Four Second Rule 27 Following Other Vehicles 26 to 27 Highways and Roads 56 to 58 Identification Requirements 1 to 3 Ignition Interlock Device 18 Implied Consent Law 13 Inspection of Vehicle Prior to Driving Test 6 68 Instruction Permit 3 Intersections 32 to 34 Lighting Equipment 54 to 55 Littering from Vehicle 83 Mandatory Insurance 9 Markings on Pavement 47 to 50 Merging onto Highway 58 Motorcycles, Sharing the Road with 71 to 72 Name Change 8. Night Driving 54. Obstruction to Driver's View 25. Office Locations 84. Organ and Tissue Donation 8. Parental Consent 3. Parking 61-62. Passing 35-36, 57. Pavement Markings 47 to 50. Pedestrian. 69 to 70. Point system. 11. Provisional license. 4 to 5 railroad crossing. 51. Revocations. 12. Right of way, yield. 32 to 34. Roads and highways. 57 to 58. Roundabouts. 33. Safety belts, child restraints. 20 to 22. Safety equipment required. 67. Safety tips. 67. School business 73. Seat belts. 20 to 22. Signaling. 29. Signs. 37 to 46. Skids. 61. Slow moving vehicle emblem. 42. Speed and speed laws. 27 to 28, 54. Stops required. 35. Suspensions. 12. Telephone numbers. 84 to 85. Texting. 25. Towing. 29. Traffic lights. 43 to 46. Turn signals. 29. Turns. 30 to 31. Vehicle inspection prior to driving test 6, 68. Vision test 5. Weather conditions. 59. Withdrawal of parental consent. 3. Written examination. 5 to 6. Driving is not just getting behind the wheel and taking off down the road. Driving involves many other issues. Privilege, driving is a privilege, not a right. Distracted driving, the use of cell phones, eating, grooming, playing the radio or CD player extremely loud, or other activities while driving contributes to crashes. Tired driving research shows that tired drivers can be as dangerous as drunk drivers. Road rage slash aggressive driving, earmarks include, speeding, frequent lane changes, cutting in and cutting other drivers off, forcing your way ahead and being competitive with your vehicle. Crashes, do you know what to do if you are involved in a crash? Insurance, 
vehicle insurance coverage is mandatory in Alaska, either the vehicle owner or the driver must have liability insurance coverage. Safety belts, wearing seat belts is mandatory in Alaska, seat belts save lives. Road conditions slash weather, much of Alaska's weather doesn't contribute to good road conditions, rain, sleet, snow, ice, and fog make road conditions poor and driving difficult. Rules of the road, traffic laws, breaking the law means accumulating points on your driving record, fines and penalties, and even the loss of your driver license. Not obeying the traffic laws endangers everyone on the road. Please obey the laws and rules of the road, it keeps us all safe. Always buckle up.